Mercado Airwaves is brought to you by supporters at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. If you would like to support Mercado Airwaves, visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Find us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. Keep up to date with the show on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. Follow Mike on Twitter at mmercado2333 and on Instagram, MikeMercado2333. Paul, thank you for coming actually into the home base studio, man. It's been a long time. How are you doing? It's been great, man. Uh, it's great to be back. I'm I like your home studio here. Thank uh, you, man. Yeah, it's, I'm, it's I'm awesome ready to roll, you. man. Yeah. This is, this it's actually is a really fun. nice socks hat that you're wearing too. It's actually really nice. I love that logo. Yeah, I love that logo. Uh, although it's I wish spring the, training. Yeah, yeah, no, I like the um, the actual colored one though that they actually wear on Sundays. Oh yeah, yeah, I love that. But that's a really nice one. Uh, thank you guys for joining us for Saturday Sports Stuff. I am Mike Mercado, it's joined by the awesome Paul Shavari, the guru himself. Uh, Pitchers and catchers have reported teams are ready. We've played baseball. Games Paul. have begun. Yeah, yeah we're like and five games deep. I've had my uh, my draft for our season tickets for the Cubs. You're ready. You got your game scouted out for uh, uh, guaranteed rate field. So it's a fun time. So I was going to go Kaminsky and I'm I like, it's the US Cellular. It too, yeah. yeah. Um, it's always going to be US Cellular. Yeah. But like, uh, what I really wanted to on this episode was. Um, it's kind of just, you know, talk about the excitement, like the weather's kind of uh, coming around and, and it's I think we should come in. It's baseball yeah, season. I don't, I don't need to sell baseball yeah, season. It's so great. And it's I, great that it's it's back. And, and there's it's a weird excitement. A ton of excitement. Yeah. It's been such a weird off yeah. season, yeah. you know, with uh, all, the, all the free agents that haven't been signed. I mean, here we are five games into spring it's training, crazy. one week. You know, guys have been there for a little while now. And Jake Arrieta doesn't have a team. Insane. Uh, J.D. Martinez just signed, mm-hmm. though, which is I – mean, I expected him to go to the Red Sox. Yeah, I expected five-year deal, though. Hosmer to go yeah. to uh, San Diego. To San Diego. San Shout Diego. out to San Diego. I love San Diego. You know, Not the Padres. And, I love the city. And I feel like you know th- there was whiffs of that all winter, and it's it just seems like people are waiting for dominoes to kind of fall here just one by one. And it's, it's crazy how certain guys haven't been signed, like Arrieta or Alex Cobb. Or I know I'm missing probably another big name position player, but it just seems like such a weird off season to have free agents that big not get signed. And you know, there's the argument of uh, collusion by the owners, mm. or is it just a market correction? I don't know. What What are your thoughts on that? I think it's a market correction. Uh, you know what? I think it's a lot of that. I, th- I also just think like the way analytics has pointed to. You know, velocity is at a peak for players at for pitchers at a certain age, mm-hmm. and bad speed and contact rate is at a premium at a certain age. So what happens is the game has become a younger person's game. There was a generation where you could be Derek Jeter and get get away with it because the game didn't evolve to exact sabermetrics of. So I think it's I think it's more of uh, the money has caught up with the age and kind of like the numbers have kind of turn on the players in a weird way but that's what happens when you have geniuses who are in control of these contracts and these uh these you know these numbers at least that's my opinion but i think it's fascinating that there's not more there's not more uproar about this because there's no Clayton Kershaw there's no Bryce Harper Jake Arrieta as a Cub fan, you know, I- I'm going to do this episode. Yeah, the the gonna, tier, the, the level of, yeah, of, uh, all, of free agent that there was this exactly. year. And in some years, it feels like there's at that, least a big one. And right. this year, it felt like there were some good players. But, uh, you know, who's the who's the superstar out of that bunch? And, like, Otani is a nice player. Like, I'm very excited to see him play. As a baseball fan, it's more of a, let's see what he has. I want to see how the how his how his game transfers to to the majors. But then you have, like, you Darvish. It's like, that was a surprise in in the sense of maybe the numbers that came in were a little bit just okay like it's not as many years as maybe we thought it was going to be it's not as much money as we thought it was going to be where the money lands year per year uh year to year is pretty interesting so like there was no big um now next year i think next year when we're sitting here again it's what gonna is be a, kershaw and yeah, harper and harper, well, harper for sure I, yeah and manny machado and there's like yep. there's a lot of stuff that's gonna happen next year but as of this year you can it almost feels like an nba offseason before the big nba offseason where you see a lot of teams kind of scouting and looking at it so the cubs made a move where money is spent and assets aren't given up when you get you darvish so you put yourself in a possible position where if things line themselves the right way you can make a splash the following off season. And that's where I think a lot of these teams are. I'm, and now there are teams that are just completely tanking and just don't want to spend the money. But those type of teams, like I want to see what, what, uh, 
Well, Washington does. Why hasn't Washington signed Jake Arrieta? And that's that's kind of what I was you know thinking. I, think? you know I really saying? think I think yeah. that's with with Hosmer. There was the whiff of the Padres. With yes. Martinez. Yep. There was the whiff of the Red Sox. Just from like the winter meetings, almost mm-hmm. with Arrieta, it's been pretty much like the Nationals. Like, and, and I feel like they're they they're, are yeah. they are the team that's going to spend the big money. I mean, look at look at you have to look though. at the big markets, mm-hmm. and I and I really do consider Washington a big ish market. You know, it's not right the, now with the stars the they have that, and the yeah, way yeah. the stars they have and the fact that like well that town has money. So yeah, right, that's yeah, for real, yeah. You're right. Yeah, that's so true. Good point. That's not yeah. the issue. Yeah, right. Um, Let's, yeah. Uh, but I felt like, you know, they're in it to win it. I mean, I have them winning my prediction this year. I mean, I, I can get in that list. Nice I have teaser. Washington. I've always been high on Washington. When you got Max Scherzer, Steven Strasburg, you throw in an Arietta to go with your Gio, Gio Gonzalez, Gonzalez. And yeah. gosh, who's the fifth one? I'm sure like Ross or. Uh, it wouldn't even really matter in that situation. It really wouldn't matter, yeah, yeah, really would have, matter yeah. in that situation. So, I mean, I, I, I would be all about the, uh, the five man rotation of the. The Nationals being the best in the league, I think they would to, put it in a running with the Dodgers and the Cubs, Cubs and what yes, they're doing. Exactly, yeah. like it would it would give them that that piece in which like maybe they have an argument where they could go into the playoffs and be like, hey, we can match up with anybody on any given game. You know, if whether we're behind in a series or we're ahead in a series, we can stay at pace and we and and that, that's what we noticed in this playoffs. That's what Houston did. It was relentless. That's what the Cubs did in 2016 yep. when you saw against Cleveland. Like it's all about who can just get to that finish line the healthiest and with the most momentum. And and just even having just a top to bottom great lineup yeah. too. You Shout know, out, like yeah. it was big that Houston got Verlander last year. I mean they were great on their own, but like pitching was always kind of the well, and you know, we, is is Keuchel going to be able to pull it off? You know, McCullers and all those guys. You know, like, can they really put it together? They did in the playoffs. I mean, that's that's unreal. the crazy part. But, but it's but, unreal what what Verlander did to that team. Where mm-hmm. we yeah, all I mean, turned them into like they finally were that championship caliber team. Exactly. Like just for recency bias, I know mm-hmm. you know we're in the studio and you could see my Cubs uh, World Series stuff, but I could I compare it to a move like the Aroldis Chapman move, where mm-hmm. it's that move where people saw and you're like, oh, if they win it. That's the moment where you could point that's, like that's, that's what I felt the like when, when when the Cubs got Chapman. Yep. I was like, here we go. Yeah, that's, like that's oh it. okay, like, you know, <laughs> and like you you saw that with Houston. It's like man, it doesn't almost matter what. And like the Dodgers were a good team last year. Like they any other year, maybe even 2016. If that Dodgers team plays that Cubs team, that series might be different. Maybe. You know, like, that series was kind of close as it was. Like, like Cody yeah. Bellinger, if he was, yeah. you know, just one year early on. His, so you know, think yeah, about that. Like, yeah. that team, that Dodgers team was special. But that Houston team, it, and here's the here's the sc- scary thing. And I want to get your, I heard this on, uh, shout out to WSCR to score earlier on today. I heard them uh, talk about this, how Houston and Chicago are, are are the outliers and the exception to the rule because, you know, unfortunately, like, I hate even saying this, but Berger got hurt, uh, ruptured torn Achilles. Yeah. That, I mean, that's heartbreaking. Legit heartbreaking to he see wasn't a gonna kid. come up this Doesn't year, matter, but, but at the same though. time, like, that's that's big development. Yeah, like, man. People have already been saying, like, yeah. well, that's Machado's now got to come and play third for the White Sox like, next man, season. Like, that, that that's what happens changes now. everything. It's, yeah. And it's, it's a bummer, you dude. Know, at, this, at the same time, like, I... I wasn't totally thrilled when the Sox drafted Burger. Like, I, he has sure. great makeup. He's supposed sure. to be just, just a, a raw, natural hitter. But since they do, since they did draft him, mm-hmm. and we're in that situation, I don't. I want to see as much development. I want to see as much playing time as he can get. I want to see as many pitches he get. And now it's oh, he needed like you're behind. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and, and that's, he's going to miss out on a whole year of that. And this is what scares me. It's like, and and it's not even for the baseball fans, but it's more for the pressure that comes from, you know, the the person who goes to one game a year or the person who who tweets at a player because they only care when they lose. But the fact is, this is a situation where the Cubs, the Cubs are the only team because Houston lost two number one draft picks that didn't make it to their World Series team. The Cubs are one of those only teams that drafted, picked up all their players, put the pieces together. And cashed in. That's not usually how it works. And what I what, what worries me is because it happened in the same city, and now you see a team trying to do, trying to take the model that a lot of teams have, where we're rebuilding, we're starting from the ground up, making sure the foundation is set. But it doesn't cash in. in that's three things. Years, not a lot know? of teams do that. The teams yeah. have been doing that. And right. the Cubs, the Cubs and the Astros are a prime example because it's happening right now, and they both did it. With a lot of finesse, those two right. teams, you know, right. and, it, and it's reminiscent of what the Red Sox did. You know, it's yeah. just when you have the capital to pull off something like that, too. I mean, think about where the Cubs were when Theo Epstein came. 
you know, and, and so you can, yeah. you can influence that sort of change, you know, new ownership, you know, and it's like for real, we're going to, we're going to make uh, renovations all around Wrigley Everything, Field. Yeah. Things are going to happen now. Yeah. You know, this team needs to be one of the, the big spenders, you know. Yeah. So what if they're the National League Yankees or basically the National League Red Sox? You That's essentially it. what they are. You got to do it. They're going to do that philosophy, and it totally worked out for the Cubs. Yeah. And it, we're only on, what, year three of the real window? Yeah, probably the real of the window. Real window yeah. Of the window. Quote, unquote, and, window. And they were yeah, planned yeah. on, like, a seven-year window to begin with. So, I mean, you know, I mean, I like the Cubs this year too. How could they not win the NL Central this year? It's going to be a good. It's going to be really good. And you know what? I'm I'm glad you bring up the NL Central. Um, Milwaukee makes some really good uh, moves. Yelich and and Kane. You get Kane uh, on a five year deal for about eighty million. And uh, Yelich from the uh, the Marlins. I don't know. What, by the way, um, we're not going to spend time because I don't want to give them any time. But the Marlins, that organization, uh, like yeah, it's hot garbage. Derek Jeter, like I don't know what's going on with that. Like I un- I understand exactly what's going on with that. Actually, you had a quick. Uh, uh, no, let's get yeah. to the okay. Marlins later. Yeah. You're talking yeah. about the, the so, Brewers, though. Um, you know, here's the thing: the Brewers had a really nice season last year, but you know, I think there's a really weird. Really weird retrospect of last year's season with Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. They're a talented team. They're a good team day to day. They're going to be dangerous. They weren't this real juggernaut. Well, they weren't supposed to be anything. Yeah. They're in the midst of a rebuild. But at the same time, things kind of clicked fast. And I think they were kind of ahead of where the White Sox are right now, you know, in terms of the timing of it. And teams can do that. You know, it's like you you just kind of put the right team on the field. Things start clicking. The right day. Eric Thames last year was huge at the beginning of the season. Sure, That might have kind of help them a little bit early on and spurred some things. I think it was a good clubhouse dynamic last year. Now it's interesting Mm -hmm. when you add uh, Lorenzo Cain and Christian Christian Yelich. How are they going to fit in with some of those guys? Um, What are you going to do with Ryan Braun? Nobody wants him. Yeah, exactly. Ryan Braun is still there. You know, Domingo Santana, he came up last year. Can he have another good season? Uh, Travis Shaw, you know, he was pretty good last year too. But, you know, what's he going to give you at third base? Um and I think they want to have uh, Braun play first base too, so they can have Santana, Kane, and Yelich all on the outfield. So it's kind of it's it's going to be an interesting dynamic. But like they're see, interesting. Tell me, tell me what you think of this starting rotation, though. Uh-huh. Chase Anderson, Zach Davies. They got Julis Chassin or Julis Chassin. He was with the Padres last year. He's kind of been around, but he was on like a, kind of a, like a recovery. I think he played with Atlanta a couple years okay, ago. Sure. Okay, sure. Uh, okay, but like yeah. you know, just kind of up and down. Had some, but has a high ceiling, seasons. Sure. I think it was out about two or three years ago, came back with the Padres, had a decent season. He was their ace essentially on, on the Padres last year, which mm. that doesn't say much, but I mean, but know, now he's right, on the Brewers. Right. He's the number three. He doesn't have to be the number one in small market San Diego. He's, he's got a good three defense around him. Right. Yeah. yeah, right. And he's gonna have he's in a friendly ballpark. Yeah, there's it's just oh, a yeah. different yeah. When just... when the Brewers win, the fans go out for, for games. So it's I mean I And so they play the Cubs. And then it becomes well, really no. Noise. Even then, it's yeah. even more ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, I I, wish I love I that gone. stadium though. That last series yeah. at Miller Park, where I think like the Brewers had a walk off, the Cubs yeah. had like an extra inning win or yeah. something like that. You know, like oh, there's just it's such a fun because it's such a fun ride. That's it's become like, oh, it's a rivalry. Yeah. yeah, it's like Yo, a college definitely. rivalry. You know what? Here's the thing, Bob. I think you know, I think it's hard to judge specifically rotations because it's so fluky and it's so up and down. The difference between what we would consider a solid good staff and a you know pretty bad you get to the bullpen early type of staff is really small in today's metrics you know in the way we see the run differentials and you know the cubs went from last year in 2016 to being the top 3 and then they were in the uh, middle 15 mm-hmm. and i think it was like literally like 0.2 of a point like it's it's just that, like you're talking about strength of pitching just down to the yeah, numbers right, yeah right now my what what it comes down to is is Milwaukee positioned themselves this offseason to take on a team that only got better? Me and you had this conversation at work, uh, at the studio. You lose John Lackey and... Um, oh, yeah, you lose John Lackey and you lose Jake Arrieta. Jake Arrieta, and, and you, you gain... You Darvish you for Darvish Arrieta and, and Chatwood for Lackey. And Montgomery as I your like six. it, but at the same time, like, Lackey had a game mentality. You sure. know, like, I mean, like, Lackey was a presence on the mound. Can Chatwood be what John Lackey's kind of character was on that mound and the way he would pitch in big games? You know, like, Lackey would come out for it. I always knock Lackey, but, like, he came up big he's in his He's a professional. Yeah. yeah he, uh, and I, I, a, I, I, like, 38 pro, yeah. years old, I doubted John Lackey's ability to be 
a, a person worthy enough to be on a playoff team. And I know he wasn't their strongest pitcher by any means, right. but but he belonged there. Now you get Tyler Chatwood, and and he's a good pitcher coming from Colorado. He's a good so pitcher. all his numbers that we saw in Colorado, kind yeah, his of his splits, yeah, gotta, his splits were kind of crazy in got, favor of being being away from Colorado. And I think that's any pitcher. I think he's worthy enough to be a four or five on any I, National League team. That's sure. fine, you know. Like so, that's that's big. That could be just really good scouting on the part of the Cubs, and you you got to go some somewhere younger. Than Lackey, so you know, like I, I understand, like we're not bringing him back, you and know? you know who you have as your uh, two and three, so at least your three and four are solid with uh, you know Quintana. You mm-hmm. have him for years, and like you know, here's well, here's the funny. Go ahead. Well, I was gonna say the thing about you, Darvish, though, mm-hmm. against Jake Arrieta, it's like that's kind of like a pick your poison. It, it and I, I, on- I would go Arrieta just just for the fact that like he he belongs with the Cubs. I know, I I totally get the the idea. I could understand the sales pitch of why people would want Jake Arrieta. My, my whole idea is we've known. They've made it obvious to us Arietta wasn't part of the the the, the long-term future. Mm-hmm. And quite honestly— They could have gotten something for him, though, if that was sure, the case. No, I get, no, I get no. that they kept him all the way down to the, the nitty-gritty. The they almost went to the World I Series think, again with him. And I think this is one of those final moves that that's allowed from that World Series. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah, you know, well, that you can't window. hold on to forever. And, and like, you, you turn into the Chicago Blackhawks after. Oh, you know? shout yeah. out to what the hell that mess that's going on on Madison, dude. Do you think Bowman has a job? Uh, that's a whole nother conversation. Yeah. I, I think he does. Okay. I, honestly, yeah. I, yeah uh, I think they all stay. I was bummed about Ryan Hartman getting traded yeah, local. You know guy. Yeah. yeah. It sucked. It sucks. But we'll, we'll do a Blackhawks show maybe next offseason. Um, you know what, man? Like, here, the thing with, with, with Jake Arietta is. You know the the idea is do you pay a player for past performance? It's like you're you, no, but but at the same time think of think of like he he has the mentality to pitch at Wrigley Field. He was a part of that whole. thing. I don't like, disagree. If you're gonna keep someone, that's a guy worth keeping. But then the idea and like the the idea is though, you I wouldn't say unanimously, but uh, consens consensus wise, you Darvish is considered a more valuable pitcher right now. He's younger. He's he's had so much upside. He He's pitched in big games. Now so he's pitched in Game 7 it. of the World Series, even though he lost. I think there's a bigger jackpot in betting on you, Darvish, than there is betting oh, I, on Jake Arrieta. I get that and that's entirely. That and and yeah. I think the, there was the rumor that Arrieta turned down the same exact contract that Darvish accepted. So there so you go. So crazy. And, and that's and real. I've heard some stuff. I, I, I want to say, I don't know if this is real, but like... Arietta said some stuff about Cubs fans and stuff, um, you know, just like how they're terrible or something. Yeah, I, I, that's we're unverified, all, but I thought we're I'd all terrible. seen matter, something yeah. like that, just salty about not coming back to Chicago. But it, it's, it's, it's it's weird it's that fine, it's weird though, though that like when can you think of a time when big name players though were out at, at this far in the season, early in spring training? Ne- uh, never. As as far as like what consciously like paying attention and, and keeping up with everything, especially at the job. Like I've never had a, a off season where, you know, it's been a pain to produce shows to try to come up with the show. Cause there's been no news. There's been like trades and stuff, but like, who and, like, cares? Like, and, and, and mostly just it. like a lot of off field politics, like the whole argument with like, but look at, you know these... what? Are, okay. So what are the Marlins doing? Remember, uh, we wanted to talk about that, right? The, do you do you like what the Marlins are no. doing? So I can explain it. Yeah, please. Okay. You know what? Here, go ahead. Yeah, so sure. okay, and and people say that there was another owner that was in play that was going to spend money on the team, and you, you had something there. I mean, we it, it always goes back to Jose Fernandez, man. If he if he wouldn't have passed away, if he wouldn't have died in that and boat people have accident, said that. I think Yelich even mentioned that. Different team entirely, and they probably would have competed this year in the NLEs. They would have definitely given oh, yeah. the Nationals a run for their money if Jose Fernandez was alive. And that team was building for something last year. They had a great, a great core. The yeah, outfield, they had Stanton, Stanton yeah, Ozuna, sure. Yelich, yeah. all in the outfield. And then sure. you know they still have Bohr. Um, they had Echeverria at uh, shortstop, but he he couldn't really hit. But he was a great, great shortstop. Traded him to Tampa. I'm trying to remember who they had out there at shortstop. Um, you know, and I know I'm missing some guys. Real Muto, of course, at catcher. Pitching staff wasn't as strong, but like you get the only no hitter last year was a Marlin. Oh yeah, Edison Volquez. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow, really? Is that the only no hitter last oh, year? I want to say the only no hitter last now that year. You're, probably Edison Volquez. Yeah. Jesus Christ. So I mean, yeah. you got that. You, you know, think if Fernandez was alive in that lineup last year. Man, you know, you know what? Like, I just think I think you have a very valid point of where they could have been had so, the tragedy not happened. And, but and, and and but but even then, it was still probably going to be a transfer of ownership but at yes. least they would have had yeah. that going into the selling year but what so unless you're going to pull a chris sale and you 
even if you don't think you're going to win or you're going to try to give as many assets as you can to make your franchise valuable, who's to say that they're going to make the right move to get the same type of package? Because Rick Khan got a King's Ransom for Chris Sale and for Jose Quintana. Who's to say that Jose for uh, – John Carlos Santa? Well, I guess what, the stand-in what, – what, what, what were you comparing it to? But I'm just saying, like, who's to say that they were going to get the value if they're trying to make this transition and they're they're doing what they did with Christian Yelich and they're trying to trying to trade everybody? Are you? Yeah. Are we trusting that they're going to get the value back? Well, they, from these they, guys? well, they got Lewis Brinson back in that trade, the Yelich trade, and that was probably the biggest return they've got on anything. I understand why they basically got screwed in the Stanton trade. I mean, you got a guy that only wants to go to a select few teams. All of those teams have spent a lot of money. All of them could fit Stanton. You know, the Cubs could have found a home for him. The yeah. Dodgers could have found a home for him. The Yankees found a home for him. And, you know, did they get fleeced? But, I mean, you got Starlin Castro back. That's, you know, that's almost an upgrade there. And the Marlins are probably going to flip all these guys. You know, like, it, they should get the highest value they can for uh, for Real Muto, JT Real Muto. Because he's right now a catcher in his prime and probably really one of the most underrated catchers in the league that's really a star. And, uh... You know, I'd I'd like to see him get flipped this year. So I get the total rebuild. I think they they it's funny they, they were ranked like one of the worst uh, farm systems last year, twenty seventeen. This year they're like ten eleven is where a lot of people have them. And I don't know if it's just completely based on some of these trades. You know, like I don't know the extent of all the guys they got back, but at the top you've got Lewis Brinson as the biggest return. You know, he's played a little bit with the Brewers last year. He was, you know, top prospect, top 10, top 20, you know, up there. He's, you know, in the top five almost in some lists. Um, he's he's a guy that's ready. It's like, you know, they could build with what they've got. You know, Castro, Brinson, Real Muto, you know, they have something there. It's just, uh, I think people like to exaggerate a lot of stuff. The reigning NL uh, MVP gets traded to the Yankees. How much does that suck? Think if that yeah. happened to the Cubs like 10 years ago. Sure. You know, or 20 years ago. You sure. know, when things like that really sure. could happen. Now I don't think that would, but... Or, or it wouldn't be as big of a deal. Right. Know? Now, it, it's interesting because, you know, you bring up what the Marlins are doing, but then, you know, as a, as a White Sox fan and, and being close to the situation on the South side, do you think that there's... Do you think that there's they're on the right track in the sense of they're so whatever Florida is doing, whatever Miami's doing, the White Sox have already kind of gone through all that. They've traded their superstars, mm-hmm. they've turned them, we've already seen we've seen what the assets they got back are what they're gonna become. My question to you is do you believe that with the assets they have, have they A gathered enough to guarantee themselves that they have two, three, or four of them that are able to pan out two or three years from now? And then on top of that, do you trust management to be patient enough do you trust kenny williams enough to say we we're gonna wait do you think he doesn't get that itch of all right or let's let's well, go I, I just think the philosophy behind putting together a baseball team has changed and like you can call it the Moneyball era or whatever you want but i think you know there there was the influences of Moneyball and what the red sox were doing and what the cardinals were doing you know and it's 21st century baseball it's like all right you top to bottom you have to have a great organization like you've got to have a deep farm system to supplement what you're putting out on the field you can build a core of young players because you can get so much control of them off the get-go you've got a good system to kind of raise them and comb them through to get into their major league career then after that it's kind of fair game but like you know it's it's major league baseball it's the show you know you you have the guys that sink or swim you know And uh, you you want to get as many guys that you think can swim, and that's hard to do. But at the same time, like, we scout it top to bottom. I mean, like, all the video that's out there on high school players, it's ridiculous. Like, But that's part of the problem, too, isn't it? Like, we, we were talking about it earlier on the show about this idea of – you know, it not working out. The Cubs are the anomaly where, like, you normally it just doesn't work it out that way. Like, we're gonna look back and be like, "Hey, you better enjoy the fact that you're you were lucky that the roulette landed on your team that you root for because it could have landed anywhere else, and you could be looking at and playing catch up to them." So, like, I wonder because it's in the same city, but this idea that we can watch Birmingham, 
we can watch them right now in mm-hmm. Arizona. We we see everything that they're doing. Yeah. So like we think and the numbers are, are the numbers are readily available. Yeah. Too, if you want to look so up like, the players' there's background. Weird. Yeah. It's weird right now. Like it's well, not. And, and it makes it makes it more interesting that everyone's an armchair sure GM, GM now. Yeah. And and what's weird is how many writers are actually getting recruited on as advisors to front yeah. offices. Yeah. So I mean it's. It's, I mean, it's a total numbers game, and, and, you know, don't get me wrong. I love the numbers, but, like, I don't get some of the crazy formulas and algorithms no. and whatever. So you, like, there's no crazy point. metrics out there. But I don't think there's a point to learn it. I, I think there's a way to understand the basic concept of what the game is trying to do. But to try to understand individual algorithms or trying to, like, piece together what each team is trying to look for specifically yeah. i think it's mood point because it changes it's so it's so flowing it's, it's like technology well and think of how the game itself let's just talk about you know the x's and o's yeah, the, of the game you know, like uh, yeah. it's home run strikeout right now that was yeah that was i mean last season especially was home run strikeout well it, it's what it sets me about these this this idea of game game time and pace of game and like this idea that okay the game when when the game matters, it doesn't matter how long it is. That game five between the Cubs and Nationals was four and a half hours. Mm-hmm. But because it was game five of a series, you didn't care. Nobody complained. There was a lot of action. There was a lot of moments. But in a game in August or a game in May, yeah, you don't want to be there for three and a half hours. But that's baseball. Mm-hmm. And I think... I, I think it's really weird where, where we're at right now with, you know, X's and O's. Like, you, you brought it up. Like, there's shifts. There's specialty pitchers. There's there's so much information in today's game that the game is a little bit slower. But guess what? If your team is trying to win, if you're the Cubs, and the difference between you getting a game seven or a game five against the Dodgers is between uh, – uh, um, between uh, Wilson Contreras going out there and telling John Lester, I need this pitch at this time, then you got to deal with it. Yeah. I, I, I think baseball's ultimate problem that they're never going to solve is that there's ultimately 20 to 35 minutes of like action in a three hour game. And you're just, you're paying for that excitement. But nobody I mean, complains. that's the thing. Is, I, I guess the thing is, is, you know, they're not trying to sell to you and me, the guys that will go to baseball. We're going to go anyway. Yeah. Baseball and yeah. watch baseball and understand baseball yeah. and just, you know, breathe it. The the funny thing is, is they're trying to get the person that doesn't really care much about baseball, but try and get them into baseball a little bit. And I get that, but I feel like they're they're almost cheapening the game a little bit. You know, like I, I, I my mantra for the whole thing that I always kind of say whenever I see these, like, oh, you know, they're gonna limit. They're they're gonna t- t- uh, put the pitchers on a time clock. You know, like yeah. oh man, you know, yeah. like that's never happened before. Right. Like, ugh. Or uh, you know, like uh, the, the DH in both leagues. Ah, oh, really? Okay. And like, you talk about making games I, longer. Know, like, I like the pitcher. Yeah. You know, being being involved with it. But all right. All right um, oh, what, what's it? Oh, a limit on visits to the mound. Yeah, you know, only like, six. Originally, it was like you know, no catcher visits, and yeah. it's like you're gonna ruin the game. I and mean, yeah. like, and and the the irony is like we got to get the game shorter. If you would like to support Mercado Airwaves, visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Find us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. Keep up to date with the show on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. Follow Mike on Twitter at mmercado2333 and on Instagram, MikeMercado2333. Mercado Airwaves is brought to you by supporters at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. But we need more offense. There's just not a lot of offense in baseball. It's like, it's a game that isn't based on time it's based on how much you get it over <laughs> right and like, oh, it's, it's that's, so that's true. baseball the, yeah. the goal is to get the game over with from the get-go one two three we got them out you know it's boom, boom. and this idea though that that you brought it up like people want action home runs are all-time high yeah and and that's what makes listen and then you, that's People love dingers. But you know what? You want a two-and-a-half-hour game, you put Mark Burley out there, and you'll get a two-and-one ball game. Yeah. Okay? Some pitchers know how to pitch a fast game. But you want people who want offense. You want people seven to six games. You know how to get a seven to six? Home runs, people on base, walks. And you know what ends up happening? You have a longer game. Next time, especially like, oh, there's a man on, two outs. You know, this pitcher's getting a little cold. They're going to talk to him a little bit. It's like, what, like, like, that's, that's still going to happen. I mean, game. that's still going to happen. But, like, you know, it's like <clears throat> signs getting mixed up when a new guy comes in the game. You know, especially in like a game that's intense, you know, like seventh inning, we're down by a run. We put in, uh, you know, our first or second reliever into the game and, you know, catchers trying to get the signals, you know, like, all right, I've been catching 
a lefty, you know, that has a great breaking ball. Now I got to get this like right, you know, righty slider, you know, coming in at me. So, you know, I don't know. It's uh, it, it, I, I wish they wouldn't mess with it because my mantra has always been like, I thought this was the bigs. Sure. I thought this was the bigs. I always grew up knowing that like, oh, well, you know, in the bigs, you know, they play it like this, you know. Right. Like, well, when is the game over? When it is over. And if like, it takes so many innings. That's part of the charm of it. Like, I think everything needs to evolve. You know, MMA evolved. The UFC evolved. Like, you know, there things have to adapt for it to grow and for it to live and for it to breathe. I've seen. I think it can live and breathe without it. But at the same time, like, you're alienating a certain fan base. But yeah. I think baseball, baseball's a subculture. No, you know, like, I agree. Okay, so like, I agree. I've gotten into that. soccer. You know, like I'm a huge Liverpool fan. Sure. Yeah. When, you I've knew seen me, this, yeah. when you knew me five years ago, never. would you? Yeah, never, never, never. Never. And the thing is, like. You're a Raiders was, fan. Was, you don't have yeah. no culture. But I like the Raiders. Yeah. You know, like I like the. It and shows like, your character. Yeah, yeah, I like the Raiders. I like the White Sox. It shows your Bulls, character. Blackhawks, you know, it shows like, the type of person you are. Yeah. And Raiders and White Sox are big for me. You're horrible. Sure. Continue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're a piece of garbage. But yeah. yeah and then now I like Liverpool. So I'm sure there's other people like It's like, oh, man. Yeah. You're human trash. Yeah. Anyway, I've gotten into them. I watch each game really. Religiously. So I think there's a way that, you know, it's like not everyone likes soccer. Sure. That's the thing. Is, and it's not like I never liked soccer. I don't know if I just ever had the patience to watch a lot of games. Sure. I'd watch the World Cup. You Some know, Olympic. I, I don't think I've ever given the Chicago Fire a whole game in right, my life, you right. know, watching it on TV. But I've definitely watched some Chicago Fire games on sure. TV. Um, so a lot of times, 90 minutes plus whatever extra time they have. Like, yeah, yeah. But it's really it's not that long. If you think about it, you dedicate like 45 minutes plus. Take a break for 15 minutes, and then you dedicate 45 minutes sure, plus. Sure, yeah, no, no, no. That means split true. up two hours. Two sure. hours split up perfectly. We're to a football yeah. game where there's dead clock every 30 seconds, and yeah. You, yeah, you no, and it's a, like soccer's sure. always ongoing. Sure, and, sure. And, it, and it gets really weird because, like, you got the games where it's nothing, nothing, and it's like, oh, wow, I wasted 90 minutes of my life on that. But then sometimes you get the games that are just super exciting, and that's things like – I mean, I don't know how much you know about English Premier League soccer, but Liverpool's been a very interesting team this year. You know, mm. Mohamed Salah, baby. Um, don't bring that but, garbage but, to this, but Ameri- this American um, house. It, and this is so separate, but uh, Manchester City's running away with it. Okay. You know, over not that that makes a difference, but they're they're basically they got it locked up. You know, like that's that's a bummer about that sport. Is like in a league like that, it's decided so early on. Yeah, but but the exciting thing is like so they got the Champions League. You know, in, in like Europe, yeah, yeah. Liverpool's a part of that still at the moment and uh the, the goal is to win the european cup and that's kind of a playoff so it's it's interesting how like there's that that subculture like you you know to get into soccer where like you got to have the patience for the game you got to have the patience for the way they sure. do it not everyone has that and i think baseball can have that you know like, but I, I, there you, is also a difference like Neymar is a star. Ronaldo is a star. Yeah, well, Messi you can is a star. build stars. But, I mean, we can name the stars. But, but... I, you and I can't. But the difference is, though, is the sport. The sport's athletic. It's fun. There's highlight moments mm-hmm. every second. It's gift. It's gift available. It's gift yeah. friendly. Yeah. Like it's 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 very much a basketball s sport where it's just so easy. Baseball is just a, a very chess game. It is. Just, you know, kind of. And there's nothing pitch wrong with that. Pitch, moment there's, by moment. You there's know? nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with how beautiful baseball is it, but the idea is you will have to evolve it in the in the sense of like technology where you have to make it available for people you have to use technology when it benefits you you it time is who cares if you spent money it doesn't matter there's people who go to cup games who leave early because it's part, part of the experience you know what i'm saying like there's just a bigger um uh, it doesn't matter how long the game is as long yeah. as the pros care as long as they're able to play at the time, I don't give a shit how long it takes for me. It's just, it's not, it's a weird complaint where it's like, hey, this profession that you're doing, that you've been, that, that you guys have been doing for hundreds of years, change it for me. And not just adapt for me, but change it for me. How, what do you want to see happen in baseball, though? What would make, I would it, love what to, would make it more exciting? What makes sense for this day and age? No, but to me, it's not about excitement. It's about, it's about, utilization of what what's available to you so the right type of technology when it comes to replays communication you know the fact that uh that you were able to go from you know you had to take four pitches and you could just you know say hey we're walking this guy moving forward that's smart that's smart like don't let your pitcher throw three unneeded shout out don't let your what shout out to what are we drinking uh fist Fist city City. shout out fist city um which we got to get in some Cubs and white socks that's that was kind of part of that yeah yeah for real um we're having a really good conversation, but like this idea that that you know 
we're trying to change the game in a weird way, but like you got to use technology in the right way. You got to use it to use the right replay. You got to be able to you get you keep the game moving, but you keep the game moving creatively, not at expense of the game, but to benefit the game. So, you know, you shouldn't be able to rush a pitcher coming in who's in long relief. You know, if you got to find other ways to get, I think so far with the changes they've made, it hasn't affected it too right, much. You know, but the, the who's pitch to say? clock hasn't happened yet, right. and I wouldn't be surprised if that happens in the next couple of years. The DH in the National League hasn't happened yet, but the same thing by like twenty twenty five, that could happen. Um, you know, I, but I think it's going to be like you know things like that, and I almost feel like it's going to be kind of. Um, a, a real hard thing to stomach for a lot of like purists. Mm. And um you know, I I always thought 9 on 9 game, I think a pitcher should definitely hit. I understand the you protect your investment, he can't hit as well. I'd rather see a DH, but at the same time it's like that's the game. I'd almost wish with uh you know, I almost wish that both would go back to pitcher hitting, but I, but I've always liked that the differences between the two leagues is it makes it two different leagues, American and national. And I feel like we've talked about this before, but like they're getting away from that, that it used to be, it it was literally two different leagues that had an agreement to be the major leagues together. And now now it doesn't even matter. And I don't want to see a shakeup of divisions and I don't want to see like a weird mixed playoff where it's like American League one plays but like, National League eight in the first round. No, or something. no kidding. But like you know, it, it, to be fair though, there's been so many times where divisions have changed, teams have moved on, teams have relocated, and like we get these new matchups. And you know, at first it's a shock, of course, because anything, any change is a shock when it comes to these things. But you know, twenty years from now, who knows? Like how awesome would it be? As opposed to waiting for the Cubs and White Sox to win in a World Series, they could play in an ALCS. Just throw it like who cares? Like in the new American be, League, oh, it'd still be big if they met in the playoffs. That's the, yeah. the idea. Is like I just I, it, I it, get no, I get it, but like it used to be Chicago had a well, I mean it always Chicago had a National League team, team and an American, American League, League team. team. You know, like St. Louis used to have an right. American League team, a National. And I think League it, team, yeah. I think there's a a beautifulness to that nostalgia, but that nostalgia never goes away in baseball. That it's part of the lore, but it continues to grow. You know, like and that's the idea. Like I. You know, if you guys listen to us here on the network when we do the uh, the Good Brothers, when we do the movie and pop culture show, you know, S- Star Trek has a really bad reputation of they've never adapted to the times. And they created this new show on CBS, and it's really different. It's a lot more like the J.J. Abrams, the new movies that came out. And those those new properties, the old school uh, Star Trek friends would like uh, Patrick Stewart and, and – um, What's the other guy's name? Um, um, William Shatner. Oh, you're uh, comparing yeah. the, the captains? Yeah, sorry. So, no, but this idea that, like, people love that because they're very similar and they stood to their to their DNA. Yeah. But these other shows grew because they brought in a new era of fans. Because guess what? Eventually, those people die off. Mm-hmm. And you need people who are going to buy tickets, who are going to buy your merchandise, who are going to become season ticket holders, who are going to watch playoff and games. And they're they're afraid of the fact that the younger generation just isn't. And you got to find a way. I, I almost feel like that kind of always happens, though. I think back to like I mean, part of it for me was the strike. So like you know, like you grabbed me in a certain year in the '90s. I'm probably not sure. as interested in baseball as I was when I was younger and collecting cards and watching Cubs and Sox on whatever whatever time I can get my hands on them. Versus when I got back into baseball about, you know, like really it was Sosa McGuire was kind of like, it was interesting. I remember like kind of being excited for the Cubs that year too. Uh, you know, they made it to a wild card, you know, I was like, that's kind of cool. Something's, something's happening. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like the, the white Sox. I, I remember too, even when I hated baseball for those few years and not hated, but like, um, didn't care as much. Was it 2000? Uh, no, 94. 94. 90, oh, the oh. 2000 kind of brought me back. But oh, all wow. I was saying is like 97, the white flag trade really, took me out of it like for those who don't know what the white flag is trade is uh july of 97 uh trade deadline Sox traded i think it was like wilson alvarez who was like one of their top two pitchers at the time um gosh i'm trying to think who else but it was basically it was um there were two games behind cleveland at the time who the indians were amazing that year they lost in game seven. Oh, that was against the marlins extra innings to the okay marlins. yeah, yeah. The yeah. indians were just hot in the yeah. middle of the 90s you yeah know, jim tomey manny ramirez you know okay but um the Sox were two games behind them and basically traded some key players on their team, signifying that it was time for the rebuild. And, and really, you know, with, with business and the fact that it's a, you know, a whole company and how they make their moves, you can trace it to 2005. I'm pretty sure 
but it's very minuscule, and I, I really don't want to go into that. Interesting, I think, I, yeah, sure. I don't know if I can do it, you know, and, and maybe someone can prove me wrong that it wasn't. But it's so eight you know, it's years, like, maybe. But it, yeah, but it's like maybe. you know, you make that move that that begets the next move. Sure, that begets sure. The next move. We that, probably, yeah, know? it's probably yeah, in the window. Yeah, 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 yeah it probably is. Yeah, yeah. sure. So, yeah, probably. I mean, you know, but I mean, you could probably you could probably go back a long time. Sure, if we're doing that, that sure, you know, but like, yeah, but for benefit of the adult, yeah. sure, sure. Um, I think it's interesting. You know what? And let, let's go ahead and stay stay in the hometown. You know, I, I'm very excited to start this uh, this MLB season. Um, you know, uh, really fast before we get into Cubs White Sox, I want to give a shout out to uh, to Paul and uh, Baseball Week and Journal. They gave me the uh, 2018 season projections really fast before we get into hometown talk. Uh, in the AL East, you got Paul. He has the Yankees at 94 and 68. Winning the AL East, Boston at 92 and 70, Toronto 85 77, Baltimore at 77 wins, and Tampa Bay at a lowly 68. At the AL Central, you have Cleveland winning the division once again at 96 wins, Minnesota with 83, Kansas City with the spiral that they have gone into this offseason at 71, tied with the Chicago White Sox at 71. Interesting to see what the White Sox really are. We'll get into that in just a little bit. And the Detroit Tigers at 59 wins. Really the basement of the American League. Yeah, you one, have, I have over 100 losses for the Tigers. I just really think they're they're going to just totally blow it up and start yeah. over. They already kind of have, but I think like we're kind of waiting out Victor and uh, Miguel. So yeah, really, yeah, and very interesting to see just kind of that what happens when it just doesn't cash in, mm-hmm. and then like you just go down there. Yeah, I feel bad for the late Mister Illich, the, yeah. the Little Caesars, uh, you know, yeah. empire there. He, you know, he uh, he really cared about his sports teams. I think he. Uh, he was involved with some other teams in town too. Yeah. I would say the Red Wings or Pistons, maybe. And he or... paid for somebody, uh, some activist, uh, some very famous. I I can't remember the story, so I don't want to get the wrong name. But paid for somebody's uh, apartment for their entire. Maybe it was um, oh, I, Rosa yeah. Parks. Maybe yeah, yeah. I, yeah but, no, and, and so yeah. Yeah, but in the American uh, in the AL West, he, have... he wanted to see a winner before he went, and it sucks. And, and he it, went, yeah. and it's they get close. You know, they now they're now they're kind of pick up the pieces. I mean, yeah. think about it like a city like Detroit. Not an economic powerhouse. In fact, one of the you know most popular stories of a city that had not retained you know the economic boom that they had right. in the post war. You know, like and and you know even during the wartime era, Detroit you know was a very big powerhouse in in you know the American economy, and they still are. But sure. um, the Detroit Tigers, you know, being a team that's a big market team, almost the way they spend, the way they're trying to build, yeah. you know, and now they're. Signifying it's, that they're they're ready to to uh, rebuild. I, so the question is: Is are they going to spend like they did before? You know, can they buy their next championship if they can put together the right squad? That's I that's kind of what I'm what I'm wondering to see what they do. Um, and and I think that benefits the White Sox. You know, we talk about Kansas City is kind of they're kind of resetting their thing, and it's like they were small market for a while before they built what they had to right. win a World Series. That's you know. We talk about the Cubs and the Astros, but Kansas City is another team that did that exact same thing. In back-to-back years, they got there. They could have cashed in twice. Mm-hmm. Uh, and rounding out the American League, you have Houston at 92 wins, winning the division again in a tight division against the Angels at 90 wins. Now, is that a surprise to you that I have the Angels that yeah, high? Yeah, that high. I think it definitely is. I think they have some really good talent. I it, think they have the best player in the league. on how it's going to click and if Shohei Otani yeah. is healthy and if he is who, who they say he is. But I think pitching, But this division eats wise, itself. It does. This and, division needs itself and, always. And one thing, you know, I was looking at. Um, so, so I should I should note uh, Baseball Weekend Journal. I should probably have the URL, URL on me, but it's basically uh, basically I think baseballwj.wordpress.com. That Attaboy. could be wrong, but look that up. Baseball yeah. Weekend Journal. Check it out. Um, I'm doing a team preview for every team. Ooh, nice. So I did my first one is up today. It was the LA Angels. Cool. And when I was looking into them, I kind of felt like it, you know they got Ian Kinsler at second base. They still got Justin Upton that they picked up from the trade deadline. Well, who's the rotation? Uh, the <laughs> See? Garrett Richards. See, yeah, no, that's that's the thing. Their rotation that has been glass. Yeah. Yeah. It's been broken glass. It's the reason why the Mike Trout. Time, yeah. It's the reason why Mike Trout isn't as famous as he well, should because I, he should I be see, in the playoffs. See, but at the same time, his supporting cast was Albert Pujols. Okay, um, an old fifty-seven-year-old Albert Pujols. I, what else do you got after that? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but you know now they got Ian Kinsler. But was, again, but like it's now still, they got Zach Go- Kosart, Andrelton Simmons at short. First base is going to be Pujols. That's so tough, man. Houston's just so. And then good. you got Trout in the outfield. Uh, DH might be uh, Pujols and uh, Otani kind of split in two. 
Um, what happens if Texas gets Jake Arrieta? If Texas, I don't think it changes a lot for him. I, honestly, I think I think Texas is kind of in a weird holding pattern right now. I don't know. It's uh, it's a team that has been strong in that division, but I think Astros are definitely they've. I think they've kind of taken over. The Rangers were kind of dominant over them a couple of years ago, which yeah. is why the Astros struggled. I think in 2016 to make the playoffs after making it in 2015. Um, but you know, okay. So look at this lineup. So like Delino De Shields, Elvis Andrews, Shin Su Chu, Adrian Beltre, Nomar Mazzara, Joey Gallo, Robinson Chirinos, Willie Calhoun, Ruth Nedodor. So they got some boomers, but it's, not a it's lot. boomers. But a lot of them yeah. are like, oh, maybe on they'll the other, have a good year, maybe they'll have a bad year. On the other you end, know, of yeah, you don't, you really there. don't know what you're gonna get yeah. out of that lineup. Same thing, kind of with their pitching staff. They did pick up Matt Moore and Matt Miner. So Cole Hamels, your ace, lefty. Uh, Matt Moore, lefty. Mike Miner, lefty. Doug Fister, righty. Martin Perez, they're like it seems like uh, him and Hamels are the only holdovers. Lefty. Oh, man. Yeah, probably then. Alex but... Claudio is supposedly going to be the closer. I don't even know who that is. Yeah, honestly, but I think Jake would help that team. You think? I think Jake going to the Rangers would definitely help. I that think team. it would, but at the same time, I think it, it really is dependent on the pitching. I mean, you could get some pop out of that lineup, but like Beltre is getting old. Oh, they're um, all getting old. Shinsu Chu is your number three. I don't know. You know, like Andrews and DeShields, can they be consistent at the top? Willie Calhoun looks interesting, but I don't know if he's got the stuff to kind of stay as an everyday player. Joey Gallo, low batting average, but he can pop that ball up into the upper deck. Um, Odor, you know, you never know what you're going to get out of him because, like, feisty player. I right. mean, it's a guy that took a swing at uh, Jose Bautista. <laughs> uh, didn't just take a swing, landed a nice swing. Yeah, landed a, landed nice, a, nice, yeah, landed a nice jab right on his jaw a couple <laughs> of years ago. So, I mean, like, you really don't know what you're going to get out of that lineup. And I really don't think the Rangers are going to be a great team this year. I think they're definitely going to regress. And I think it's just going to be kind of a sign of, like, okay, something's gonna, there's going to be some sort of shakeup. Like, Arietta could be that, but I don't think the pitching alone is going to make this team great. Sure. I think, yeah, so I think it's, it's a division to look out for because it's a really strong and it, it likes to eat itself. Oh, so. the Mariners should be interesting, yeah. but, like, you saw Hernandez. Uh, yeah, King good. Felix yeah. Took, took that line drive off yeah. his forearm. And, and he's not the same King Felix he was. A few years ago. Yeah, yeah. so, I, I mean, but he's he's still King Felix. Yeah, no, still. You know, you get that with uh, uh, Paxton. Yeah. And, you know, you, you've got you've got an interesting lineup there where if Arietta went to the Mariners. You know, I mean, that's the thing. It's like there, there's a few teams that I think might be – that one player away from kind of just maybe boosting them. And you bring up a good point with like, yeah, what about that Rangers starting staff? That's not a terrible starting staff. If you've right. got Arietta maybe bumping Fister or Perez out wow, of there. Exactly. And just, you know, at least round and it get out. another righty in that lineup. Exactly. too. So yeah, you bump out minor. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, just to officially, you have Houston winning at 92 wins LA at 90 Seattle, 81 Texas at 80 Oakland at 65 moving to the national league East. We talked about it, uh, it, probably the weakest division in baseball. The NL East, Washington, you have winning win, 98 wins. You're really high in Washington. This is the second straight year you're really high in Washington. We'll get into that in just a second. You have the Mets at 86 wins, Philadelphia at 76, Atlanta at 66, Miami at 57. The worst bottom half of baseball belongs to the National League East. So that's where a lot of teams are going to feast and try to boom their their playoff uh, intentions and their standings. But uh, you're really high on Washington right now. I think, and looking at this, you know, just because I could see the sheet, I could see who your favorite is when it comes to it. But you're really high on Washington. You're really high on them on last year. What is it? And I know we talked about Jake Arrieta being in there, but to me, it almost feels like bringing another sport into it. It almost feels like the last year of uh, LeBron James before he left for Miami. You think, yeah, the Bryce Harper is going to be holding. It's just it's too before. big, man. It's just too you know, big. and that's the thing is like I when I envision it, it's hard for me to envision like Bryce Harper is going to win the World Series and then leave the Nationals. Right. Like, right. The, yeah, the Nationals are another team that um, great chemistry, great team, great players, but it could easily just pull the pin out of the whole thing and it falls apart. I mean, think of all the managers they've gone through. You know, they, yeah. they, they soured Matt Williams after, like, I think he got a manager of and the year out of him. They got rid of Dusty Baker. Let me ask you this. Can Dave, Davey Martinez And that's what I want to get into. Lead that? Davey I mean, Martinez. I, yeah. But here's the thing. Davey Martinez coming from the Cubs organization. There's this weird misconception that Davey Martinez was uh, a confidant in the sense of Joe Madden ran – Everything through him. He's been his bench coach for a long time. Sure, though. but there was going back to like Tampa. Use, using a wrestle a wrestling term, Joe Madden's Vince McMahon. It doesn't matter how important the the right hand man is. 
every decision, every crazy brainchild that Joe Madden yeah. has is Joe Madden's. There's nobody else like Joe Madden. Davey Martinez is not Joe Madden. No, but there's Davey no Martinez other... gets to be the guy in his ear like, hey, you think that's a good idea? Maybe. You know, like, you but know, we, he's you, probably we live got in his this... own way. We're like, well, I wouldn't have done that. We've lived in this city. And we've seen Joe Madden put to the fire. So you and I have seen enough to know Joe Madden don't. We saw with Abazio, yeah. like there is a a stubbornness to Joe Madden. So like the reason I think Davey Martinez stood He's around got his style, but I I don't know. I just, I think it's interesting. But, I think I think is he going to be Joe Girardi? Is someone, there a, someone got the basic closest schooling on how to manage that you can sure. get? So did from Joe Madden. So Wouldn't did McCarthy. Out of, out of any manager sure, in baseball so right now Ma- that's that's employed, isn't that the one guy you would Abs- want to like I'm with pick you. his brain during a I'm game? I'm with you. you know? I'm not yeah. disagreeing with you. If yeah. we were talking football, yeah, you want him to be part of that tree from the assistants. But Mike, we saw with McCarthy and uh, and uh, and uh, what, Tony. Oh, uh, uh, the, the Giants homeboy. Yeah. Uh, with, so yeah. so like this. No, just this. Uh, which no from um, uh, St. Louis. Um, Matheny? Talk yeah, about Mike Matheny. I'm oh, sorry, McCarthy. Oh, I got our engineer. Sorry. I have our I have our engineer Matheny to um Tony Larusa. Okay. okay. So like it, it it doesn't just because you come from a decent tree doesn't mean that you you're gonna automatically pick it up and be that team and be able to you here's 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 my issue too. David Martinez isn't walking into a team that he's developing his own, putting his own style into them. He's going into a team where he has a the superstar of the sport who's considering leaving. He has a pitching staff that, as great as it is, we all know one thing about pitching. It is one pitch away from all being destroyed. Yeah. Well, I, I'm just saying let's just see what happens. Oh, no, mean, no, like, no. But I'm, was Dusty going to be a championship manager? I, I mean, but at least the, the track record with Dusty is we've seen him take two different teams. We've seen him but build culture. never win the big I one. don't disagree with that. I'm with that, you. But there might could, be a reason for it. But there, Joe Madden was a coach a manager that couldn't win it. But he did. Eventually, when he had but, the but right team. But at the same team. time, I think like Madden overachieved in his career in the sense Fair that he took the Rays to a World Series. Fair enough. Take that Fair enough. Fair enough. He took the Rays to the World Series. But Mike, what, the, and then he goes to the Cubs and he made them champions within a few years and got them to the playoffs a little early. So the, I mean, like, and and think of how many times the the Rays made the playoffs with Joe oh, Madden. Oh, in the so, American like, League East the of all divisions. Overachieved sure. in his career. Um, Absolutely. Who are we comparing him to again? Uh, Vince McMahon. Uh, no, not yeah. Vince McMahon. Um, the other manager that we were uh, – Dusty Baker. Dusty Baker, sure. Dusty Baker. Um, yeah, okay, so he took the Cubs there, but they were kind of like – they were there. They just needed the right – like Dusty's a good guy to have. Like, sure. You know, like, like oh, bare, bare ass minimum, I'm running Dusty Baker out as the guy running my team this year. Sure. Okay, fine. Fine, I'll take him over a lot of managers. But it's Dusty Baker. Sure, but like you know, the like, same thing. There's just something about him that like he just can't control pitching I staff. He can't don't disagree. Can't really put a team together to win the whole thing. But he's been good. He's a good guy that can just get a team together. You're absolutely the long right. Long haul, he's there. Short, maybe game by game. Maybe but my not so much. my yeah. issue is at this point, it's not about Dusty. It's about. Davey Martinez. And that's what I'm saying. Coming into is, is that going to be the answer? And, and I, I think cool. I think it's going to be interesting because there's already a and here's my dynamic problem. that all he has to do is just kind of manage. And we're going to get to Tampa. Which, he's been to Chicago. No, been, I'm with yeah. you. I'm not hating, but I'm going to get to to my biggest. I wouldn't say gripe, but my biggest question mark to your World Series picks in a second. Uh, we're not going to spend any time in the NL Central because we're going to talk about Cubs White Sox for a little bit. Let's go about the NL East. We were talking. Go for it. About. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so it's like I have them almost like almost split like ten games, ten game. You know, like so. Like, sure. We yeah. know Miami. They're probably going to sell off players this year. That's why I have them doing so bad. It's kind of like Detroit. I just really think like they're really going to have terrible years because they choose to, and so be it. I think that's fine because it's a proven method. Atlanta, I think, is going to surprise, but I don't think they're going to make noise. I think Philadelphia is better. I think Philadelphia is a little bit further along, even though Atlanta is probably going to end up being a better team. I think Philadelphia is just going to be a, a little bit ahead of them this year. But I almost feel like the Mets, you know, it's the Mets. They're, they they can spend money. They got Todd Frazier. If that pitching staff can stay, stay healthy, which I think I really do believe that Noah Syndergaard is going to stay healthy this year. I had a feeling about before last year, and it happened. I think he can stay healthy this year. You couple that with DeGrom. You never know with Matt Harvey. I was going to say you know, Harvey. What I, about I, Harvey? If he's healthy, then fine. You get the starts if he's healthy that you can get out of him. But you can still make something happen if you're the Mets. And I think they're just slightly better than those teams. 
but Washington's going to run away with it. Yeah, and unless Daniel Murphy is playing against the Cubs, it really doesn't matter. We'll get to the uh, NL Central. Yeah. Talk about the Cubs. Uh, we're not going to stay because stay, we're going to get back to it, but you have the Cubs at 94 wins winning, St. Louis at 88, Milwaukee 85, so the top is going to be very competitive. Pittsburgh falling to 73 after the moves they've made, losing um, losing both uh, McCutcheon. McCutcheon and uh, Garrett their Cole. pitcher, Garrett Cole. Um, and then Cincinnati at 69 wins. Uh, we'll get back to it in a second. Let me just jump to the NL West really fast. We have the sure. Dodgers at 101 wins, obviously winning at Colorado at 88, Arizona 86, San Francisco 83, and San Diego at 76. So what you have is I really think Colorado and San Francisco, like, yeah. And it might not even be that order. Arizona, sure. Colorado, San Francisco, something's going to happen. Very Any one of those teams could be the second wild card. But, you know, and like I think – I almost think the Rockies are going to regress. I had them as a dark horse last year. I think they have some better players. They this just year. didn't have any gas at the end of the last year. But I just think year, it's, yeah. it's such a weird team to manage since you play any one of your games yeah. in a hitters friendly environment. The hitters friendly environment, you know, and like yeah. you know, their their uh, their first baseman uh, rookie. I, I'll have the name up in a second here. Jake yeah. McMahon, I want to say, mm. sounds right. Uh, they have yeah, Ryan McMahon. Sorry, Ryan McMahon. Um, he's. He's going to be a wild card. You know, like you, you, you ditch Mark Reynolds, you get Ryan McMahon, but you still got Blackman, uh, LeMahieu, Arenado, Story, Parra, Ionetta, Desmond. You know, it's so like, hard, though, with you know, 81. Like, and it's yeah. hit or miss. You know, will yeah. Arenado and Blackman and LeMahieu be able to hit at the top of the order like they do? Mm, so and soft. you almost think, like, Arenado's going to have pop. Blackman might not have the season that he had last year. That might have been his career year. However, you got to like Blackman at the top. LeMahieu's always been, for whatever reason, DJ LeMahieu can hit at this level and play second base. Like, yeah. what, what a solid guy to have on your team, and he can keep that up. Gerardo Parra, I feel like they might be moving on from him pretty soon. Trevor Story is one of those guys, too, where it's like, man, he can hit the ball, but how long is Trevor Story going to be, like, holding on? Signing his, Wade his Davis. Yeah. When is he going to eventually become a third baseman? Right, you know, like, right. <laughs> right. And then um, you sign Wade Davis in the yeah. offseason, so you have yeah, a closer. Yeah, yeah, that too. Wade Davis yeah. coming in as the closer. I mean, that's that's huge, too. So after so having Greg Holland, last, uh, Greg Holland last year, who isn't signed yet. Again, but, like, that's, again, we talked about in the show. It's just it's so crazy. We've never had an offseason like that. Now, knowing all that about the divisions, this is where I wanted to get into it with you. So... Baseball Weekend Journal's AL Champ and NL Champ. We have in the American League the New York Yankees coming out. The power, the juggernaut that they are, just the, the depth is crazy. I think Aaron Judge is a little overrated. I think he's going to have a sophomore slump. I, I'm i almost counting on him having a junior slump, too. I think he is uh, as good he'll, of a player. He'll always be high strikeout, high pop until injuries yeah, and, and he's age a big take body. Over. Yeah, so he's not the star of that. He's team. young, though. He's like, yeah, what, 20, yeah, 20, yeah, yeah right. And I'm not, yeah. I'm not saying his career is but, but like, yeah. just right now, it's but yeah, I don't think it's going to be 50 home runs. And even then, I think, I think there might be like. Teams will figure out how to pitch yeah. him a little bit. Stan is the star of the team. Yeah. Like that's, oh, for yeah, sure. That's, that's what it is. And he's a star. lineup is going to have, what, three, four, yeah. Judge and Stanton. Yeah. So, they're or, monsters. I don't know. Or yeah. Stanton. Judge. Stanton will probably be yeah, three. Stanton, I three think. and then yeah, judge, judge four. four. Who uh, knows? I don't know. So and, and, and think about, you know who the manager of the Yankees is. And this is what I'm getting into is Aaron Boone. You have the New York Yankees and Aaron Boone managing, going, winning the American League. In the National League, you have Davey Martinez and the Washington Nationals finally getting through and overcoming everything that's happened. This is my issue. I don't, I don't even want to say it's an issue. This is my question mark for that prediction. As possible as it is because the, the talent's all there. Everything can line up for it. Are two first-year managers going to take two superstar-filled teams and two huge major markets with the most pressure on them. There's no more pressure higher than these two teams. Both of them make it to the World Series and fulfill one of maybe five uh, broadcast-friendly World Series. Like, is this... Can that happen? Like, I'm not... And, like, you know what, for all that, you're right. Like, it'd be, I mean, it'd be big because it's the Yankees all right. the World but, Series. And it's Bryce and Harper Washington. and Washington. I mean, uh, the yeah. city of Washington hasn't won a World Series since 1924. But, right, but, like, that's my... my and, like, you're right. And it, in it, you have Washington in six games over the Yankees. But it just... To me, there's just so much that... There's so many question marks. Like, if you were to sit here and tell me, hey, the Dodgers finally are going to win the World Series and they're going to beat the... I don't See, know. In that, I mean, the, that's the, the I've, Boston Red Sox. I will totally know, buy people that. People should know every time I make a World Series prediction <laughs> is I've never been right about one. 
I've been right about NBA predictions at the sure. start of the season. I mean, sure. I, I call Golden State Cleveland yeah. that first Pretty year. good about football picks. Uh, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, football, I have it, like, maybe not in August, but, like, mm-hmm. when it gets down to, like, late December and they, they get the the get pairing, the, yeah. win the pairing straight, mm-hmm. I've been pretty good about it, getting at least one of the two Super Bowl teams sometimes, too. So um, like, but, you know, like, hockey, that's hard. But, you know, like, but baseball... Like, like I'll tell you what teams are good and in the long haul and might make the playoffs. Like, so I, like I can get like yeah. I can figure out which ones are making that leap. Whether yeah, they're not going to make the playoffs, but they're going to be way better than people expected. I can tell you some about that stuff. And that's the thing is this year I don't know who my dark horses are. I'd have to really look at it because well, it, you it call the Cubs a dark horse? They it, can't be right because they're a favorite. Well, okay, dark horse in the sense that when I think of a dark horse, I think it's someone that like they're going to move up more than people expected them to, but it doesn't mean anything about playoffs or. Okay. Like it's just like like the Rockies last year. Like, yeah, they made the playoffs, but like they almost didn't. Sure. You know, okay. Like, you know, like so, so so it's like, but I expected them. Like, people didn't have the Rockies in the conversation last mm. year. And I was like, watch out for this team. I think they're gonna do stuff. So what were the teams that I had? So it's it's basically I think I have like all the same division winners except for uh New York is over Boston. Yeah. So like this Cleveland year. wins again, Houston wins again, Washington wins again, Cubs win again, Dodgers win Dodgers again. Win again. So Colorado and St. Louis would play in the wild card game. But I really think it's going to be like Colorado beats St. Louis. It doesn't matter. They're going to get knocked out by the next team anyway. Sure. But, like, you never know. I mean, Milwaukee might be, and I don't want to say a dark horse because they had success last year, but maybe that's the team that just makes their way in. Maybe it's the Mets. You know, like, maybe Arizona or San Francisco finds a way in. Maybe Seattle finds a way in. Um I, I don't think Kansas City is going to do anything. People are high on the Twins. I'm not really high on them this year. Yeah. Boston and New York are going to duke it out. So, like, no matter what, those teams are in. No matter what, the Red Sox and Yankees are yeah. in, one of them will be a wild card. So where's the other wild card coming from? Is it Toronto, Minnesota, the Angels, the Mariners, the Rangers? Uh, you know, like, or could the White Sox and Orioles surprise people? Could be anybody. Year? It really and could I, be anybody. And, and this thing is like, I wouldn't be shocked if we're talking about the White Sox in, in October. I would not be shocked. But I don't really believe it. Yeah, I, I think there's a ch- I think there's a chance. I don't, I think if you were to it, say, I mean, you know, it's big, like the that magical season. I think Rick it's fifty percent. You know? I think yeah, yeah right. Yeah. I think it's fifteen percent chance that they're competitive. I think you're hoping for the the rest, the eighty five percent, for it to be uh, uh, a bad season, just one more year of the. Oh, the it's, high draft pick. The, but it's develop also, your guys. You know, there's no rush. Yeah, yeah. But here's this is where uh, the reason I, I mentioned the Cubs is I think. I don't know if I'm picking them to win the World Series. I'm not. I, I'm not going to make a pick. Cause the like, Cubs are, are in the conversation. The question though. is, you got you Darvish they, now. You still got I think what Brandon the Morrow might pick. be. Brandon Morrow might be as good as Wade Davis. Bro, next we year know. As we a don't closer. know. He had a, we he don't know. Really, but, yeah, we I don't. mean, he was he was great. In the Hanley Jansen with the was, yeah. held that down. But here's the thing. I think if you're asking me of all the teams that we think are going to make the playoffs, they're the safest bet to win. The Cubs in the idea of they're the safest money. I don't think they're they're the they're the safest bet to win, actually win the whole thing. I think but, Cleveland is the safest bet to win their division. Oh no no no! I'm, not, I'm saying when the playoffs start, like when we have all the brackets set up, I think the most the team I would be most comfortable having money on are the Cubs. But I don't think that means that they're going to win the World Series or anything. I just mean if you gave me two hundred dollars and I came, like, Mike, here's two hundred free dollars. Throw them on a team. You don't have you don't have to think about it the rest of the year. Throw it on that team that they're going to win the World Series. I think right now the team I would be most comfortable with giving that money to are probably the Cubs. Of course you do. But I think the team that's probably the best team why is not Houston. Houston. Yeah, I was I was say, say, why best, not Houston over the Cubs? But I think Houston has the more but, volatile. But why way. not the Yankees or Dodgers? They were close it's last all year. About why volat- not the Red Sox? It's all about volati- volatility. We, we just talked about it. New York, Boston, they're going to kill each other. That's just they're two teams that have to go against. They're both going to make the playoffs, who, though. So this going to get there. This idea that they, it might who, be another ALCS. Think here, and here's that. the thing: there's no other teams. Can you handle another Yankees, Red Sox, ALCS? I mean, I, I would love it. I don't think I could stay up for seven hours per game, but as long I would as you love get it. your Cubs, Dodgers, sure. you're happy. But here's the, this, that's the thing, though. It's like if you look at all these teams, and the only team that I see, if we're using fighter mentality, we're like if fighter math, we're like. This guy fought this guy, and he beat this guy. Then, thank you, Nicole. This guy beat this guy. Then he, I would say, the only team that I've seen beat Washington, beat the Dodgers, and in, in, in one sitting are the Cubs. But with that being said, I've seen Houston roll through the playoffs. So that's why I'm saying, like, 
Personally, I feel comfortable giving the money to the Cubs. But if you tell me in October, hey, the Cubs went into the World Series, they lost to Houston, though. I'd be like, That's yeah, what probably. Was yeah, That's probably. Right. Like, yeah, I could totally see that being a thing. Who did Houston? It was Houston beating the Cubs in the Sports Illustrated prediction. Was it? Okay. Yeah. See, okay. So, so like, I mean, I don't know. I mean, but that's I mean, baseball hasn't moved much, and and every year I think I feel like that happens. Like lately, it's kind of happened too, where uh, eventually we get that. Pretty much, who people are predicting winning it are winning it, and yeah. and I think this year there wasn't a lot of movement, so. It's, it's, it's kind of going to be the same thing, know, but you know, there's always changes, there's always injuries, there's always people who get hot, people who get cold. So it, it, it comes, doesn't, to, it doesn't matter. So some of the usual suspects will be will be there, but there's always going to be the movement at the trade deadline right. too. Is who's going to build up and be uh, a behemoth? And that's why, like, I just think, and it's and and it also, you know, yeah, it's easy. Like, yeah, you know, I'm a Cubs fan, so it's easy for me to pick to be a front runner and be like, yeah, pick the Cubs. Like they've won it, we've seen them win it. They three straight NLCS. Yes, chances are they'll be somewhere in the conversation there. But like, I really believe this Bryce Harper thing is is a thing. I think it's a thing. That he's coming to the Cubs. I no no no. I think it's and a that thing. he's not winning the World Series. No, or? that there is something weird going on in, in Washington. They're going to deal with all season. It's intangible. It's something that we can't put a, a finite number to. But something is there that. But gonna, don't you think with Bryce Harper, he's kind of kind of want to going to prove his value? Where it's like, what, you know, like, what does he have to prove? Um, that he's a champion. No, but it doesn't matter. Because even if he doesn't win, you don't think the, the Yankees would be Wouldn't like, here's You want to win it now? Of course you would. But when you know no matter what you win or don't win, $400 million is right around your corner. Oh, no, yeah, but, but I mean, you can go in going, I've been a but champion. It, oh, I agree. To the Cubs, especially of to course, the Cubs. I'm not saying it's not valuable. What I'm saying, does it matter? Does it really? Like, deep in ours, does it really matter if Bryce Harper walks into a meeting and be like, I won this or I haven't won this. It doesn't matter. The talent out it outshines whatever 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 value he has before a World Series really doesn't change before it. It's like Kershaw. Kershaw become more valuable because he won a World Series. His Oh, I think totally his Lord no no. Totally. This, two totally different conversations we're having right now. We we're just talking about Jake Arita. He's no, won a World Series. That, that the makes value, him valuable. The value opposed to the lore and the the reputation and the 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 legend is not the same as in what the you there. I think teams, Kershaw, would re, teams would rather have a guy that has that pedigree versus I, not. Perhaps for the average, for maybe if a guy like Darwin, in a guy. maybe in maybe a guy, for, ben, for, sure, for a guy yeah. like Ben Zobris, and, and that's here a player. But Clayton Kershaw cannot be any more valuable than what Clayton Kershaw is right now in 2018. Whether or not he wins a World Series, there's no, he is at peak value. There is no more. Clayton Kershaw cannot be worth any more dollars because he's already worth infinite amount of dollars. Bryce Harper is worth infinite amount of dollars. Uh, Mike Trout is worth infinite amount of dollars. Doesn't change. Their legend changes. The history changes. Their 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 story changes with winning. They they their person becomes more valuable. But the actual contract, the actual player, the the values are to me to me. I'm gonna say to me that value has. Clay Kershaw can't be more valuable. He's already the best pitcher in baseball. He's yeah, as valuable. Yeah. You know what I'm saying in that sense. Maybe you're right. But is I, does is Bryce Harper the best hitter in baseball? I is he the best. You're right. No, you're right. No, I'm like, not hating on that. That's I'm the not, hardest thing about sure, hitters is like sure. you know who would you is Manny Machado have? more valuable? Like, like pitching is one thing. It's sure. Like Clayton Kershaw is a beast. I can't think of the position player equal to that. You know, like yes, yeah, Stanton is a stud who can hit the ball, but like. Not as consistent as Kershaw is. Sure, like, you see what you I'm know, saying. Like, like sixty just, home runs is one thing, but so my question. So that's when it comes into like, you know what? You could be a hundred percent correct. I I don't want to make it poo poo and be like, oh, you know, no, you're crazy. Just because this is having this happen, they want no. Look at anything can happen. The Cubs had a bunch of kids win a World Series. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. What I'm saying is, my. My devil's advocate to your World Series picks are just these. Like, there's a yeah, lot of oh, weird circumstances. Pick there's them weird, apart by yeah. all means. So what I'm saying is, I've never gotten one right. I've always been high on Washington, and it's the Yankees. That's that's all I'm saying. But I think I put down predictions for other awards. Yeah, I'm really stuff. excited yeah, to get to this. Yeah. So let's let's um, the rookies of the year. You have uh, Ronald Asuna from Atlanta. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. I'm really interested to see how Atlanta bounces that, back with all these weird. That, that was stuff. a guess too. I mean, and I wish I would have brought the list with me, but I had about like five to seven guys that I thought is the American League the easiest one for you. Well, who did I have on there? You have uh, Shohei Otani. So obviously, yeah, no, and that's the thing is I think if he stays healthy. Hits at a decent clip. He doesn't have to hit home runs, but if he drives in guys, scores, hits over 250, and has a really strong pitching record, 
I think people are going to be like, well, of course he's the best rookie. Sure. You're like you're getting two players basically for the price of this guy. Now, I think you have some cojones with uh, what you did with Cy Young. Okay. Be- I will see. Okay. So I'm thinking like, it's going to be different. Like it can't be the usual suspect. But here's the thing. I think your Chris Sale one is, per- is, is correct because and if, I, if I always ever- try. I think this might be the year. And if it's ever going to happen, it has yeah. to kind of be this year, right? Because yeah. this is, with David, the, the issues with David Price, Chris Sale needs to. Well, and he's and he's been around long enough that I think he can pitch his way through a game right. if his stuff is working. And he's looked really good the last. He's couple a great of years. pitcher, it's right? Just sometimes like, yeah, he yeah. just really just botches a game. I want to see or him win. Too. Sometimes he doesn't get the run support that he right. needs. You know, you give him uh, two earned runs over seven innings, and they can't win the ball game for you. Like. That's not on you. It's yeah. on them. So. I like Chris Sale. I know a lot of people have some so, issues with things. But I mean, I like think it's like, yeah. is it going to be Kluber? Is it going to be Keuchel? Keuchel is yeah. it going to be Verlander or Cole? Yeah. Is, you know, is it's it going to be um, Otani? Is it going to be? Um, but I think Chris Sale's again talking about like for my idea what the Cubs are. I'm comfortable putting money on them. Chris Sale's one of those players who like. I'm cool. Like I'm not gonna worry if I put money on them. I'm comfortable thinking like they could get there. They could get me to, yeah. to where I need to go. So, so I, th- I think Chris Sale. But who do I got for NL? John Gray from the Rockies. <laughs> like we talking about like we have Chatwood over here. We're like, hey man, Chatwood. Like look at that. That's that, probably that like, split. You know, like, yeah, I, like that's probably gonna be one that comes back and haunts me. Like yeah. what you're thinking, but like. Yeah, Scherzer, Kershaw. I I really feel like Kershaw always has injury problems with him. Who's the Cub? That's and, and he's to only Cy getting Young. older. What's that? Who's the Cub that's closest to a Cy Young? Uh, I don't think it's John Lester anymore. I think it's between two and guys. I don't think it's going to be you. Or... I think it's Kyle Hendricks is the closest one. Okay, I'll say because... not Jose Quintana. No, yeah, but like Kyle Hendricks is. Well, okay, is... so that's who I had last year for the NL. Interesting. Yeah, that's who I had last year was Kyle Hendricks. You did. That's right. Yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. So here's the thing about Kyle Hendricks, like we're, because you know I, I really like you going out there with with John Gray, but here's the interesting thing about Kyle Hendricks is he's one of those. He's I think a very really good definition of of a dark horse that you were talking about. Maybe he's good. He's always going to kind of be in the conversation, but if a good season and a good run, and if he's kind of that, he's at that perfect spot where John Lester's a little bit older, that rotation's kind of starting, he's he's kind of becoming the quote-unquote the professor yeah. of that of that rotation. I think he's one of those weird players where I'm like, oh, okay, like if I woke up in November and you're like, oh, he won the sign, you're like, yeah, it's his. He probably didn't have as many wins, but that stuff is kind of kind of wicked compared to. Uh, I think it's just gonna be Clayton. Scherzer but if it's Clayton or, Kershaw, and, like and, yeah, uh, that's what I'm saying, uh, yeah. Kershaw, Scherzer, and the uh, the soup du jour, you know, like whatever. Maybe, maybe Baumgartner. Uh, yeah, like, uh, and, Steven yeah, Strasburg, yeah. Jacob Degrom, no, Noah Syndergaard. Noah oh, Syndergaard. Syndergaard. There you go. There you go. I'm changing it okay, right cool. now. Noah Syndergaard is gonna be the right, Cy Young. Right stop there. talking. Yeah. That's a great one. That's that's a great. You know what? I'll give you that's it. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. That's a better dark horse than Kyle Hendricks. Um. That's a good one. I like that one. Cross out John yeah. Gray. Put on Noah Syndergaard. Okay, cool. No, in fact, do that for me right now. Yeah, here, go ahead. <laughs> and then, uh, as a managers of the year, you have Bud Black and uh, Aaron Boone. I got. You know what? Here's the thing. Boone, of course, because the Yankees are going to win the AL East. I think that's going to be huge coming in your first year. That's sure. the one change. They better win out though, of all Paul. those teams. They so, better so win. Of course. So he better he better be a good 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 manager, man. Because you know what? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. You're gonna tell me that. Aaron Effin Boone was the best option to take the Yankees to the World Series. That's my problem. Like I respect the idea that you think that be, the, your your thought process of how they're going to get there. But my idea is to initially start off and be like, we're going to hire Aaron Boone. We're going to fire Joe Girardi and hire Aaron Boone to manage what's supposed to be a team that's on the cusp of winning. And, like, I'm not, I don't want to hate her because I've never uh, seen him. I, th- I think there was just kind of like a, a malaise with Girardi where it just wasn't working out. He'd been there for so long that I think it was sure, like, and there's always time it was for time a for a shake-up. And, and, we'll see and, shake-ups everywhere. You're you right. know, think about it. It's Aaron Boone. It's not just some guy. Let me crack one of those beers, yeah. Shout-out to uh, Fist City. We've been enjoying ourselves with these beers. Uh, good times, Paul. We're already an hour into this pod. This has been awesome. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. So, um, yeah, like, it, but but you were saying like this this um, like it just it, it it's really weird. Like Aaron Boone coming in, but like, but it's really weird. Martinez but it's really first, weird. Yeah, like to yeah. me that you have two different. You have a guy who's who's been on the bench, who's who's been through the process, who's 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 and he's gonna won. lose. He's gonna lose. In the no, world's, no, no, no. He's gonna beat. Beats. A guy that's coming in fresh. With that's the worst yeah, team. No, Davey Martinez will outmanage 
Yeah. Uh, Aaron Boone in the World Series. That's what I have in six games. See, but I would love – see, this is where I think you and I would disagree. I like Rick Renteria a lot. I think Davey Martinez would be a better manager for when the White Sox are about to win than when Ricky Renteria is. I think if you were to invest in Davey Martinez right now on a team like the White Sox. You're going to screw that's... Rick Renteria no, 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 like that like, again, though? Um, it's for... Yeah, right, yeah, right. That's Shout how out. it comes down. Right, yeah, like right, 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 right. Hey, no, we like because... Rick. And, and he's but you understand what I'm no, saying? Like, like that type of team? Rick, the whole point about Rick Renteria was that he works well with the younger la, la, players and, and la, Latino players. players. Yeah. So, and maybe Davey Martinez has the same exact thing about him. I don't know. But but Rick Renteria is there. No, the Sox yeah. believe in him. I'm sorry for Give saying Rick. Give him a Rick, chance. Right. It's, it's, it's like by 2021, 2022, if they're like a playoff team, and it's like, it's just really not working right. with him. I get the change. And but like, shout out to Ricky Renteria. Years, he's there. He's right. there. Shout out to Ricky Renteria. I was, you know what? And I'm going to be 100% real with it, taking off the analyst hat. I loved Ricky Renteria. I was excited for him. I thought he was going to be a playoff type of manager for the Cubs. It just so happened that the... The so one, man, up, the yeah. one manager we that you it. were going to make yeah. that move, you had to make the move. But how do you feel about him with the White Sox? I love him with the White Sox because I think he's exactly the type of uh, manager that gets the swag, but also knows how to discipline his players. I think in front of the media, he presents himself as a curmudgeon, but really, like he's very much more of a Greg Popovich, where he is up to date with all the analytics. They are a team that that's ahead of the curve. What I do, I think. Do I think everything being equal, he's going to be here when when they win? No, I I don't think I, he. I, I think, think they'll give him a against. chance to try and win. I think they're going to give him the chance. But do I think when they actually win, he'll be here? No. Yeah, I think so he's going to give him a chance. Is uh, Rick Renteria going to be a championship caliber Not, manager? Will hmm. he be a division champion manager? Maybe. Yeah. But do I think when the moment happens, you will win it with somebody else? Like for all you know, look at. I think when the White Sox win, it's going to be a moment where it's like Terry Francona. Somebody like that comes in and takes them over the edge. But I'm really interested in general to see how the White Sox themselves use this year as a developmental year, whether they stay patient, whether Kenny, we talked about it, whether Kenny Williams does not do the Kenny Williams thing and that's jump the gun, want to go all in. But I'll be honest with you, man, even as a Cub fan and everything that, that I've seen, I'm excited for the White Sox. I think they're, they're in a hell of a position. I hope. Fans show up, I, I'm, and I'm not saying that to be one of these uh, contrarians who's like, uh, oh, White Sox fans don't show up to games. It's like, no, yeah, they do. But you better give them a product. Give them a yeah, good product maybe to watch. Not, maybe not in huge numbers, but there are White There's Sox White Sox fans, fans yeah. There, and and, they and will, I want them to see you know, them win. They, yeah. I mean, they sold out, you know, 20, 2005, 2006, you know. So I, I really think that if you put a winner on the field, you know, th- there are a lot of White Sox fans buying into it. There are a lot that I think have bought into it uh, way further down the path than I think, interesting than, okay. than like you know that I think like sure. you know your your uh, prototypical White Sox fan and you're like oh he knows his baseball and you know, he makes fun of the Cubs fan for not knowing his baseball. right right like, right, that, right you know like yeah. uh, you know I think those guys got it and I think some of the fanboys and some of the just the guys that don't get baseball you know like just um, the next just level kinda, yeah, yeah, that, yeah that next level where like people are getting it or not yeah. more people are getting it more people are buying into it and people are I think. I think they're going to be really impressed with what they see. I think the Sox are going to be good. They're likable. Yeah, yeah. L- Lawrence well, Holmes brought we'll this up. What happens, you know? I mean, Lawrence like- Holmes from WSDR to score. Shout out again to them. He brought it up about uh, the Cubs. He's like, because he's a Sox fan, and he even brought it up. He's like, it's hard to not like the Cubs because they're a bunch of likable guys, except you know, uh, Aroldis well, Chapman. But like the same thing with the White Sox right now. I like Eloy. I like um, uh, Luis Robert. Like, I like some of these guys. Like, I want them to be – I like their swagger. I like the fact that they're true Latin players who play the game like, you know, um, like uh, Francisco Lindor. Like, they, they're just – they're having fun like Javier Baez. Like, there's there's this this likeness to them. And then there's this – there's and that's what baseball needs is these type of teams that, that are like that. So, I hope one day we get a World Series. And, Paul, I know we're two Chicago guys, but I hope one day we get to see – Javier Baez talking to Yoan Mancada in a World Series. You know what I'm saying? Like, to have those moments where you're like, uh, Luis Robert is talking to... Uh, I want a White know? Sox World Series. I've always wanted a White yeah. Sox World Series. I've been spoiled and I've seen one, but yeah. one is not enough. Oh, you it's not. See more. And and I'm it's... glad what they're doing. And I, I, you know, I believe it can happen, but like, it's so early in the process. But I think the like... best thing for the White Sox was the Cubs winning the World Series. Yeah. It's well, the best it's just, thing that ever happened the to the White Sox. The best thing that happened to the Cubs was the White Sox. It's they really crazy how that happens, though, how they, symbiotic it people is. People say that they don't influence each other, they do. they do. They always have. They made a move. They're competing in the same market. They made 
a move in which a superstar from one team went to the other and the other gave up top tier assets for it. And when, when all is said and done, it could be the prospect that was better than the guy in the trade. That remains to be seen. But I think Eloy Jimenez will be better than Jose Quintana. Absolutely. But at the same time, the Sox didn't need to hold on to Jose Quintana. If no. They would have still had Chris Sale, maybe. Jose Quintana Sale's got to pitch in the playoffs. Trade Quintana. They were trying to find the best deal for it. They got, I think, the best deal you can get. And that's always going to be something. Like, Quintana helped the Cubs get to the playoffs. He pitched decently Quintana in made the it, playoffs. Quintana made it possible to get you Darvish and still have Ian Happ, Javier Baez, yeah. Addison Russell, yeah. like, you didn't have to give up anybody. Like, and that's they had what happened. Control for it. And, and that was really fair that the Cubs gave back their top hitting prospect. Eloy Jimenez was always that guy where it's like, look out for this guy. He appeared in the uh, um, the Futures Classic at the yeah. All-Star Game uh, yeah. two years in a row. Yeah. One I, of the Cubs, one with the Sox. I'm so going to argue that this is going to be one of those trades where 15 years down the road, we're going to be talking about it. And Eloy, it's going to be one of those things where Jose Quintana has won a World Series with the Cubs in five years. One in five. And Eloy Jimenez has won a World Series and an MVP with the White Sox. And I think that's going to be one of those trades where we're like, how did that happen? How did – because it's not going to happen with the Chris Sale trade. I don't think so. What? Because I don't think Chris Sale is going to win a World Series with the the Red Sox. That all depends. I know. I I, I get you. The Red Sox, I think, could win the World Series. That's what I'm saying. It's possible. What I'm saying, like, what I'm I'm feeling in my gut is just one of those – the White Sox are going to win and it's going to be with Eloy. The Cubs are going to win another one because it's – See, I what, don't know. Jose, it it's might not happen. By year. It's year by year. But I don't know. I don't know if Jose Quintana makes the Cubs I'm, championship team. I'm, I'm He's good. I want him on my. Team, I'm an odds but, man. Yeah. I'm an odds man. If they're in it seven times, chances are they're going to win it one more. Just chances are they might not. They might not. But I'd rather take the chances. I, I like my chances. I should say, in that scenario. But in the same token, you're right. They might. They might get close a lot of times. It might not be good enough to win it. But I think this is going to be one of those trades where you and I, our professional careers, are going to follow it the whole way through. It's going to be really interesting to see how it goes. Paul, we're wait, an hour. Wait, 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 wait. Before we go, we did promise some Twitter. I was going to say we're an hour yeah. 20 in, so why don't we go ahead and uh, we actually ask people to get involved. So uh, you can like us at Mercado Airways on Facebook. Paul, where are you on Twitter? Uh, at Paul Shavari, P-A-U-L-C-H-I-V-A-R-I. Or... Um, uh, you can find me, I think, uh, Baseball WJ. Look up Baseball Weekend Journal. It's on Twitter as well. And then um, I, should, I should be able to market and brand my own stuff, but I really don't remember. No, you're a horrible person. You're a Raiders that. fan, and yeah. you like you like EPL. Baseball so. Weekend Journal. Yeah. It's getting back, though. Yeah. Team previews starting today. Awesome. Yeah, that's right. And your first show was on the first Los one, Angeles yeah. Angels. Angels. Yeah, Amanda that show is uh, writing. Just our article. Which is great. I give that... you, like, I compare uh, how uh, other people project them to be, how I project them to be. And just kind of uh, what I think about them. And Tomorrow's the Yankees. And you have them really high up, and you have the Yankees in the yep. World Series, so yep. it's some good stuff to uh, pay attention to. But uh, you can follow me on Twitter at mercado2333. Like us on YouTube. We uh, Be part of the conversation. Let us know what city you're from and what do you think your team is going to be. YouTube.com slash Mike Mercado2333. SoundCloud, SoundCloud.com slash Mercado Airwaves. And, of course, on iTunes, please do us a huge favor. Like, rate, review, and share us on iTunes. iTunes.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Paul, why don't we go ahead and uh, get things started? Why don't you go ahead and take one of the first ones that you had? Uh, so Ryan Sashelsky asked. Uh, Shout out to Ryan. Uh, he he asked, where does uh, Jake Arrieta land? Where does Alex Cobb land? We already said the Arrieta. We think the Nationals. Uh, but I haven't heard anything new. It was uh, There was the whispers of the Nationals early. Uh, he's not signed as of February 27th. So, And I haven't heard any whispers. No, you know, Scott Boris is talking too type of stuff. So uh, as it stands, Jake Arrieta does not have a team, and I think he'll end up on the Nationals. He also asked where Alex Cobb ends up. Uh, you and I were t- kind of talking about this earlier. And I, I'm not sure about Cobb. I know it's not going to be with the Rays. Um, part of me thinks the Brewers. They have been talking about the cause, Brewers. Cause they yeah. wanted Arietta. I think Arietta is going to be about as much as Darvish. You know, or St. Any, Louis? What, for Cobb? Yeah. Perhaps Arietta was another St. Louis. I was going to say, well. I just yeah, followed yeah. the Arietta. Uh, it's it's going to be a team that that Toronto? can spend that money. You know, it's it's not going to be L.A. because they're almost tapped out. New York, they're almost tapped Toronto. out. Toronto. I, I could see Boston, but they're almost tapped out. Toronto could. That's the one I like. Toronto's got an interesting starting rotation. And that's too. the thing because I thought Toronto Toronto was my front runner for Jake Arietta. What if uh, Minnesota gets their hands on Arietta? Does Cobb? Minnesota want to spend money there? They might. They, I'm not saying they, they might, but year. do they want to? Um, Colorado would be an interesting one. 
I don't know if you can convince Arietta to go to, go to Colorado. Yeah, I mean, if, if they want San to pay Francisco. Him. That be interesting would be interesting if they're if they're, I mean, if they're Samarja, serious. Cueto, Bumgarner, Arietta. If they were serious about trying to make a run in that division, because mm-hmm. I don't they think might, that makes well, it. They, they got uh, Evan Longoria this year. They got Andrew McCutcheon. Andrew McCutcheon was yeah. the other one. I, man, that's interesting. Uh, I'm going to go. The Giants with... could really be the dark horse team this year. I have them at 83 wins, but like. I really don't think it's going to work out. I don't think their pitching staff is strong enough. So well, if they get Arietta, that changes. In in my uh, projections, I have Washington at 98 because I think they will get Jake Arietta. Mm-hmm. And even if they don't, they are that good of a team anyway without him. San Francisco, I think they get 83 because they don't have Jake Arietta. Jake, that's I think so that's, good. You know, Such so, interesting point. so that could all change for me. And that would be interesting to see San Francisco make a playoff run with Jake Arietta. That'd be so interesting. Um, all right, how about this one? Uh, I, for Cobb, I'm going to go with Toronto. Just go with the dark horse. Uh, I think Toronto needs to still make some moves. Um, this comes from Adam Mergens. Adam does a lot of uh, our artwork, too, so shout-out to Adam. Uh, Who is your leadoff hitter come opening day for the Chicago Cubs? Ian Happ, Albert Armoro Jr., Cal Schwarber, someone else? Um, Paul, from your perspective, you know, you, you follow the White Sox beat a lot, but from your pr- perspective on the Cubs, Pete, do you – it's pretty simple, right? Hap's going to play against uh, the lefties and Elmore the um, right. righties. Yeah. yeah, I yeah. I mean, if they're going to platoon, then you may want to consider one of those two guys or both those. And Schwarber guys on a weird you know, day when when when. Well, uh, I mean, does Schwarber have to be the leadoff guy? No, I don't think so. But like on a weird day, I and, think. And I guess yeah. I mean I'd have to really look at the on base numbers, but does yeah. he get on base as much as your typical leadoff guy? I don't think he did last year because he struggled so bad. Because he's thinner, is he going to be that much better of a player? I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. think that's going to change anything. I think it just um, helps maybe the the pressure on the knee and like maybe that helps. But I don't perhaps, think anything you know, changes. Yeah, like, you know, I mean, I, think I don't think he's a better player because he's, of he's still young. So I mean, he could just be really hooked and in the zone. You know, that, sure, and that could always happen with him too. But um, I've always liked Chris Bryant as the leadoff hitter, and I know that's just crazy. To people, but if you got him at number two, you may as well have him at number it's one. It's interesting. I'm not mad at and, it, and especially the way jo, uh, Joe Madden runs out lineups, yeah. he has sometimes the number nine hitter. Is I'm a not mad at that. Player. Yeah, I'm not mad at that. So, so I'm Chris Bryant is number one, but if not, I think out of the list he gave, it was like uh, Hap, Elmora, or Schwarber. Um, Elmora out of those three, but at the same time, I would want Bryant. If I if I'm Joe Madden, I'm putting Chris Bryant number one. Interesting. Probably Rizzo number two, or Zobrist, or Hap, or whoever. You know, it's really. The, whoever the hot hitter of the day, Rizzo, maybe number three. And I know this is coming from me who follows that beat, but it's a, it's, it's a lineup that allows you for some uh, some um, allowances to kind of do some weird, funky things because they uh, they have weird athleticism and weird positions. Oh, yeah, and like, I mean, yeah. uh, Baez could get hot at a certain yeah. time. Russell could get hot at a certain time. Like, so. you know, maybe Hayward sits at the bottom of that list. That's like, fine. You know, but whatever, at the same yeah. time, like, you need a number nine guy. When Jason Harris your worst well, the, guy. Was it, uh, Russell was usually trotted out. Yeah, would we'll come nine. around as yeah. the ninth guy too. Yeah. So I mean, like Hap or Russell or Baez in the number nine slot right before Chris Bryant. That yeah. would be my. Number That's one. interesting. That's interesting. I'm um, not mad at that. But, but I guess like let, so. Let's try and think about this realistically here. Who would it be? It's Almore on Hap. Is it though? Yeah, because I think if you if you think about it, Ben Zobris is not going to get. But Ben Zobris is not going to play as much as he's going to. I don't think Ben Zobris is going to play enough to to really be dependable to be your leadoff man. I think could Contreras lead off with your catcher. May, uh, lead off with your catcher. Very interesting because Contreras doesn't. Would you get it out of the way too? Interesting. I think the question is, it's all on where Wilson Contreras wants to be as a player. If Wilson Contreras is going to go all in, he and might be right now. He might be their best leadoff guy. I right don't disagree. Now. I don't disagree with the total package that he brings, other than Chris Bryant. Um, I think that's interesting. I don't think you lose anything with putting Wilson Contreras at one because you when when you're playing Javier Baez, you're playing Russell. There's always the potential of clearing the bases with them. They do have that that potential. You do have that potential with uh, Ian Happ. Almora can get a hold of a ball if he's deeper in your lineup like those they do have that potential that to get the ball out of the ballpark i think it's safe to have jason hayward at the bottom i think my question my biggest question with the cubs is the bullpen and the, and ben zobris i think that backs an issue i think secretly quietly not so quietly it's pretty written in the books it's javier Baez and uh and addison russell are your your up or your middle guys like that's that's what it is that's where mm-hmm. you're gonna go. Then the idea is Ian App and Elmore are gonna share left and center between with them and Kyle Schwarber. 
Jason Hayward. So, so it might be like a different leadoff guy. So I'm saying day, it's going to be so I mean, up because they have so much rotational depth within. Because, you know, I don't think it's necessarily. They can get away with it, but I think at the same time it helps. You don't want to. I was going to say, yeah. you could get away with it. Doesn't mean you want to rely on that. And I don't think Schwarber's the guy. I don't think so either. I think they're Wilson crazy enough to try. Contreras is your guy. So it's, that's an interesting. And on the days that he's not playing, which I get that he's then it's one probably going to get, what, 70% of the starts at catcher. Yeah, yeah right now. Then especially. you go with another yeah. guy. So um, that's interesting. We're going to keep an eye on it. That's good. That's good. We're uh, calling what else you got? Um, so uh, Derek Rupert was asking, uh, what will Dickerson, Corey Dickerson, do with the Pirates this year? I mean, I, just the idea that they... He had a good year with the Tampa Bay Rays last year. So, I mean, I, um, outfielder replaces McCutcheon. I think it's it's going to spark the what lineup was he more at than McCutcheon. 30 and 98, though? What was his number? Uh, what? Uh, what do you mean? What were his numbers? Oh, gosh. I'd have to look But, like, up. it was something crazy. Like, I remember, no, like, thinking, year, like, it was, it was like, 25 home runs, yeah. like, 280. Yeah, it was something like really like, crazy. He, he had a good year last year. Yeah. Here, but the question, okay. And it's not McCutcheon. McCutcheon was kind of struggling. The with question the is, what is he going to do individually, or what is he going to bring to Pittsburgh? Oh, I think individually. Because if it's individually, you know, then he's going to have a nice yeah, season. I don't think the Pirates are going to be great So that's what it comes year. down to. They lose Garrett Cole. Yeah. Not that McCutcheon hits them, but like. That's that's all. That's a presence missing. For any basketball fan, I guess this is I, something like a Jimmy Butler thing. I right? think he'll have a good season on yes. a bad team. Hey, that's all it is. He'll have a good season on a bad team. He get will be paid. The Pirates loan representative at the, the All Star game. game. Hey, shout out to Brian Laher. So was he. If you would like to support Mercado Airwaves, visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Find us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. Keep up to date with the show on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. Follow Mike on Twitter at mmercado2333 and on Instagram, MikeMercado2333. Mercado Airwaves is brought to you by supporters at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. So that happens. Really? Brian Lehrer with the Cubs. For the, yeah, Cubs. For the Cubs. That's what yeah, I'm saying. Like, yeah. shout out. Yeah. There could be worse picks, all right? Yeah. There could be worse representation. There you go. I think um, Corey Dickerson will be the, the Pirates' lone representative. That's a good call. Game. Um, Unless there's, like, a bullpen guy. I'm pretty sure they have uh, – I, I can't think of their that closer matter. setup guy, but they, they have some decent It guys doesn't matter. You know what? And what's sad is I really like that city. I love that baseball group. I love Roberto Clemente, one of my favorite players. Like, yeah, such that ballpark a, is great. I it's beautiful. Going out yeah. There. And it's just a shame that they'll never be able to cash in. But I will say one of my favorite baseball ga- memories, games as a fan ever is watching – that play in game between the Cubs and the uh, oh, the great. Pirates. Yeah, yeah. Jake, speaking Rodriguez, of Jake Arrieta, <laughs> yeah, speaking of Jake Arrieta going out there and and game, six yeah, and, yeah. yeah. Sean uh, Rodriguez punching the cooler. Yeah. So good. Uh, yeah, boo, yeah that's, that's a great gift. Um, this one comes from my cu- uh, my cousin Consolito. He's just a little jab from all for all you White Sox fans. He's a Cub fan who lives in the South Side, so he gets it all the time. Uh, but now he lives in Texas. Served in the Navy. So shout out to Consolito. We all love baseball. But with that being said, you either love the Cubs. Or you're wrong. LOL. So uh, give me some fun. It's baseball season. That yeah. means that we get to give jabs. And yeah, both... Feeling wrong is uh, it feels this good. And, uh, I'll keep doing exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. And a uh, shout out. You guys have a beautiful stadium and a uh, wonderful food selection. Let's just hope that the talent could uh, finally uh, – Reach those levels. What else you got, Paul? That's it. That's, uh, That's I think it. Answered the, oh, man. We're, we're Arietta and Coblands. Yeah. We, we established a. Uh, we're Coblands, right? I mean, I said Milwaukee. I said uh, Toronto. Toronto. Yeah. I, said, I, mean, yeah. Yeah. Dark I mean, there's so many different places. Detroit might screw things up. And we'll see. I mean, you have them very interesting. Your I think we covered a lot of things, but um, I, we never got to um, just today the MLB Players uh, uh, Union or Players Association. I think technically mm. MLBPA filed a grievance against multiple teams. Uh, oh, yes. Pirates, I Rays, yes. I forgot who else, but I uh, think teams that just aren't spending money. Marlins might, I don't think. Yeah, the Marlins they, were one. Yes, were the Marlins, because yeah, they were on the top Rays, ones. Yes, Pirates, yes. and there's one more team. Yeah. Uh, just teams. Oakland. That, yeah, 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 that's yeah. it. Yeah, you got it. Uh, wow, good job, us. Thank you, yes. Um, yes. What do you think about that? Well, it's interesting. Like, I, I think it reminds me a lot of what happened with Mark Cuban. It's like we're so transparent now. Where people are just so open about what they're doing when it comes to spending money, not wanting to invest money, what what future plans are. And like, look, at, there's no doubt that a lot of these owners said we can't spend this money. We can't have this boom come in. There's about to be two or three players who are going to make half a billion dollars in the offseason. I, I think you look at those teams, though, and, and what were they again? The two Florida teams, Oakland and we had it. We just forgot it. Pirates. Uh, Pirates, Pirates yes. Yeah. Okay. Pirates are the anomaly in that group. 
the two Florida teams, you have a team that built a stadium. And, like, really, if you look at the spending of the Miami Marlins for the last few years, it's kind of like, uh, where the fuck are they getting that money? Well, it was weird where when the they, yeah. Do the Miami Marlins have that much money to yeah. build a stadium? And, like, all of those players that they've signed over the last five to seven years. So, like, I get what they're doing. Ozzie I get the ownership. Yeah. I get how they're, like, there are some loans to be taken care sure, of. Sure. Yeah. I get what they're doing there. The Rays want to build a new stadium. They just announced that. They're going to go to Ybor City, and they're going to build themselves a nice little ballpark because Tampa is a place that you think of for baseball. Right. You know, they draw 20,000 people. And, and I don't want to hear the excuse of that stadium. Like, yeah, it's in a weird location. It's a shitty stadium. But, like, will a winning Rays team bring out fans? I hope it does. It didn't. I think it's a cool little city. But at the same time, I think, like, them and Oakland are the two teams that are like, all right, you don't got your stadium. You're a weird town. We've got a, t- a team near you that can draw fans. Let's move you somewhere else. Oakland needs to build a new stadium. And I don't want always o- been small balling. I think it, it might be a sign of the times that like gone are the days where you can just cheap out on your. Ball oh, club. no. Yeah. People want you to spend. They know what your revenue stream is. They know that you can put a good team on the field. Now we know there's great players available. Spend the damn money and, and be smart about your team. Oakland needs a new stadium more than it, than Tampa does. You're 100% right. And Tampa right. has a shitty indoor stadium. Yeah, but, Paul, you're 100% right. But think about it. It wasn't too long ago where the Cubs had a laughable home locker room. Like, inhabitable. Like, we're talking about yeah. the well, third it's, it's, yeah, biggest. Yeah, but it's Wrigley Field. That was the. But, like, the fact that they didn't even take steps to make it better. Yeah. No, those but, days but are gone. Fenway was like that. But you, you know? can't but, like, you, be you like that. You get the privilege to play there. It's not an indoor stadium like Tampa where the ball is going to bounce off the roof. Oh, no, absolutely. Not or you're going to lose where, it on the roof. Uh, yeah. You know, it's a football stadium half the year, and the, the seating layout's yeah. really kind of weird. But, and there's. Uh, 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 Sewage flooding in the, right. in the dugout. But my, and my point is, it's like, you could get away with that before. Mm-hmm. And now you're like, wait. So you're telling it's a me. Different era. You got to build a new ballpark. Yeah. You got to have the nice fan experience. Well, because if you're charging me X amount of money to still be in the stadium, and you're not, not only is it a bad scene, but you're also giving me a bad product. Yeah. Look at it this way. The A's and the Raiders played chicken, and the Raiders lost, or did they win? They, they won. won. They and won. You know who lost was football fans. While it's nice that when it's the a Raiders, whole other conversation. no, absolutely, yeah, but, but like but I'm this just idea saying that the depending on how you look at it, it was a game of chicken between the A's and the Raiders. Now, well, now the ball's in the A's court. Sure, no, it's do very you, interesting. Do you do Oakland Coliseum completely? Do you build a new stadium? What do you do? Do you move them to a new town? The ball is in the Oakland Athletics court, so I excuse them. They're off the hook. I, the fact that now in this day and age, people are like, "Oh, you spend your money in your ball club." Mm-hmm. Oakland A's are a small market team playing in a football stadium that have to somehow build a stadium and figure it out. Tampa, a small market team that doesn't draw fans, needs to build an outdoor stadium desperately. I get what they're trying to do, and and they've even given winning ball clubs in their short history, despite the fact that they've had to compete with those elements of being. A cheap team that has to play indoors. The only indoor team pretty much left that there is in like a true dome stadium. Um, Then you've got Miami who built the indoor stadium or indoor outdoor stadium that's like just beyond. I mean, it's so um, just lavish. Just so, you know, like it's just such a, you know, like a nice new, you know, lavish stadium that they built in Miami. And good for them. It's a good community, even though. Ozzie Guillen tried to alienate it right from the get-go. I don't think you go to a Cuban area and then say Fidel Castro was good or whatever like, else yeah. he said. Yeah. Um, love to see him work in baseball again. But anyway. Um, you would. I would. <laughs> you would. I would. You would. I um, would too. I love the know, like, So I get why Miami built the big stadium, had the expensive players, changed ownership. I get what they're trying. They're trying to start fresh with their game plan. I totally get that. I'm not going to tell a person how to run their business unless they are paying me to. And I think the Miami Marlins are safe to do what they do. I would love to get my hands on how to rebuild that organization. Um, Pirates are the anomaly, though, where the Pirates are, they're kind of already established, but they are a small market. They did have some playoff opportunities, but the uh, world champions have played in their division in uh, 2016, 2006. 2011. Yeah, there's just been too many times where I, oh, there's been years where Cincinnati came out of nowhere. Yeah, like, yeah, so yeah. It's just they like, had to compete with a really tough division that like is kind of fair game in the Midwest, but like mm. now the Cubs are are that behemoth 
team. They're you know, right they're now, the giant. right, yeah. yeah, right now. But I think they'll always be as long as the Ricketts family is in charge. Eh, there's maybe. always going to be. They have the potential. I, I think they're always going to spend money where they want to spend money. Sure. And right sure. now they got a, a perfect plan going. And and the name of the game, like we've been saying for the podcast, is is you got to build from within. You got to build from the top to bottom. And you got to have a good good farm system. You got to bring in the right yeah, the right guys, the right yeah. guys in. Right guys in the front office. Right mm-hmm. guys in your scouting department. Right guys in your analytics department. Like there's just all things you got to do to make yourself into a winning ball club. So Pittsburgh, I don't know if they're there necessarily. And if you think about it, their ballpark's getting old now. That At ballpark this point, was built yeah. 2001. Yeah, it's a nice ballpark. It's a gorgeous ballpark. It's you know, gorgeous. Ballpark. I don't know what else they're gonna do to it. It's a nice fan experience. It's nothing spectacular. You can't really do much it's with it. A nice setting with uh, the the nice the backdrop uh, and the bridge. Yeah, yeah. the bridge and uh, the Pittsburgh skyline yeah. in the background. Just like you know, it, it's so it's one of those things where. Yeah, I'll excuse them because Pittsburgh's in a weird spot right now, trading McCutcheon, trading Cole. You know, they had that window, you know, so now what? But the sport's in a weird place. Like, the sport's yeah. in a weird – what benefits so, the sport? So those four teams that you – know, and will be – PA can shove it. Yeah, yeah no don't get me started. No $20 million. Dollars, I'll build you a winner for cheaper. Yeah. It's a young man's game. I've been saying it for a long time. But that's why, like, you know, you and I, we always come back to it. And, like, you know, we like to bust each other's uh, chops when, uh, when, whenever we're not on the microphone. But it comes down to it's, like, the reason why the Cubs are successful is because it's the same thing with the NFL. They want out with rookie contracts. You didn't have to pay Chris Bryant, Bryce Harper money that he's going to get next year. Anthony Rizzo is on a front team friendly deal. It's like these type of things. If you're looking at uh, Justin Verlander on the on the Astros, it's just the the contract there, and that wasn't their guy. They brought that in because they knew that was a final piece to that championship. Like that's that's what it comes down to. Is we're in a day and age now where you're expected to compete right away. Got to be savvy. Yes, you got to you got to be willing to cut bait or be willing to take a risk, like the Cubs did with Jake Arrieta when they got him from Baltimore. You have yeah, to be good able- scouting, good scouting, and be able to when you're ready to win, spend the money and find the right guys to come in. You're and the right Chapman. How about uh, Cleveland? Right, you're- but Cleveland bringing in Andrew Miller. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, yeah, that, God, was big. that was huge. huge. Like, there's just there's just so many moments. There's so many things that that differentiate and the teams. fact that the Yankees could have had Andrew Miller, no, oh, yeah, and yeah. and a roll the Chapman. Shout out to the Yankees for making those happened, moves yeah. and and flipping them and becoming mm-hmm. what you said is one of your teams that's going to be in the World Series. But yeah, Gliber Torres is going to. Yeah, probably come crazy. up soon. Yeah, I mean, I don't it's know. So I mean, crazy. Yeah. It's just it's crazy. But like that's that's why like as much crap as this off season has gotten, and you know as we start you know bringing this thing home, it's one of those weird moments where I realize like the all this being said, where like teams are being sued by the MLBPA, and like there's just so many things. At the end of the day, for baseball, you have the right teams right now competing, and you also have the right teams right now. Being, becoming or preparing to be ready. So guess what? It's not the Kansas City Royals who are rebuilding and restocking. It's the Chicago White Sox. Because of the White Sox win, guess what happens? A Chicago team just won the World Series. Mm-hmm. If if the Cubs win another World Series, guess what? The Cubs won another World Series. If the Yankees win a World Series, the Yankees. If Bryce Harper wins one before he becomes a free agent, there are Clayton Kershaw. If he pitches one, the complaint used to be kind of uh, about those big market teams winning before, and like, then some small market teams yeah. won, like Kansas City, San Francisco, San, San Francisco. San, I, mean, Louis, yeah. I wouldn't count San Francisco, but you know what I'm saying, like Chicago, quote unquote, like, yeah, like those some of the guys yeah. that you don't normally see winning, right, started right. winning. So I think it's it's going to go back to that, like Yankees are going to be a big team again. Dodgers are a big team now, and that you know, and Dodgers have a long championship drought. It's been yeah, yeah. thirty years. This year, I think so. baseball's in great hands. I mean, when you have when you have a New York team that looks to be good, you have a Chicago team that is good, and a Chicago team that's looking to get there. You have two LA teams that have superstars on them. You have a team in Texas that's good. You have just this uh, just this this plethora of talent everywhere, and this idea that. Anything is possible right now. The fact that in 2020, since we're here in Chicago, we could see a Cubs White Sox World Series. That's yeah. not that's not BS. That's, that's a not a pipe dream. That's a realistic, realistic thing. That Probably can the be most a thing. Realistic I've ever felt about that. We've come close. To yeah. It a few no, times. that like, seems real. So it happened in 1906. Yeah. Uh, I remember 2003. Both were in first yes. place in September. Yep. I want to say like 04. There was even like a little trickling. And then 07. What's the other year? Uh, no, 07, the Sox were, were bad there. 08. Oh, wait, excuse me. Yes, 08. Yes. The only yes. year that they made the playoffs 
without having met in the World yes, Series. Yes. The only other year that they made like um, playoffs. And the Cubs know? got yeah. smashed by, I think, the Dodgers. Or was there someone else back to me? The Cubs were the better team all year. The talk was 100 years since their last championship. Yeah. In 08, yeah. Um, best team in the National League by record. And the White Sox got more playoff wins that year with one. One, Dodgers. yeah, yeah, because the Cubs Dodgers. got swept out. Uh, but it's a real thing. like, And I think that's I think that we all wanted. I think there was a time where people didn't want to see that World Series. But now that we're at the point where, like, well, we'll see how the White Sox rebuild goes. I mean, that's things like I could easily get lost in it and be like, oh, my gosh. They're doing it's going to happen. Yes. I mean, they've been doing this so right. So much props to Rick Hahn because, like, they let him do it. They let him do it. Where it's like we're getting rid of Chris Sale. We're getting rid of Chris Sale. Yes, we're getting rid of Chris Sale. And I'm going to bring you another fireballer to come in to replace Copac, him that you yeah. won't miss him with. And I'm going to bring in the top prospect um, in the league, Yohan while, while I get rid of a couple other guys that Quintana, be top, yeah. Right, while I yeah. get rid of Quintana and Todd Frazier and I'm getting yeah. rid of these guys. And, like, you know, and this is the, and, and, and it's fine. It, it's really good that you sober us up for a second because it's also, like, then there are the moments where a, 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 a talent that's developing and we're all interested in seeing in, in Berger get hurt and you're like, oh, that's right. Like they still you, got other guys. You still it got sucks no, for Jake Berger. but you still got to get lucky, White Sox, right? But it's not like oh, no, it's not the over. Future, right? It's the broke. Right. Now Eloy died. It might be something different, but uh, Ooh, don't say that. No, I, I have died. Yeah, I Oscar, actually meant more of as like yes, so yes, Donovan, yes. Uh, I actually meant more of his career, but I know, yeah, you're but right. Still, but but I good, don't say good that. catch, good catch. Here's the thing, though. If um, right, like it's one of those things where. The White Sox need to get a little lucky. Down, it doesn't right. hurt the whole they thing. They need to get lucky, though. Just like yeah. everybody else, they do need to get a little lucky, and they need to get in position, and they got to... But, dude, I'm feeling good about baseball this season, next season, and the following season. Guess what? This season, anybody can win it. Mm-hmm. The next year, the free agency talent is unbelievable. And by 2020, uh, we're going to be at a point where, like, are we really going to have two Chicago teams competing for a World Series? Are it you kidding happen. me? It could happen. Paul, any last thoughts about uh, dude? We've been on here for an hour and forty five minutes. Any last thoughts about baseball? Like we've up and out for for a, a quote unquote boring off season for a boring sport. We've been able to find some interesting things to talk about. Uh, I don't think I have anything else, uh, guys. Check out Baseball Weekend Journal. Just uh, try and support me. Tell me I suck if I do, uh, or just uh, kind of give it a like or a share if you like what I'm writing. But uh, or podcasting about if I can get that going again. Sure, yeah, uh, that's awesome. No, I mean. Uh, it's going to be an interesting year. Usual suspects. Free agency sucked this year. It's a market correction. Uh, it's it's a science. And I love the science of baseball to the way they play the games, the way they run the game. It's it's a great science. Um, check it out. It should be another good season. Yeah, boys of summer are coming back. I'm excited. That means here in the Midwest, the winter is going away. We get to go to our favorite stadium, eat our favorite food, and just watch you know the America's pastime and – it's a good time, man. It's going to get warm, too, yeah, right? man. It's going to get warm. There's going to be a sun. We're going to have sun. There's... We're going to have sun. It got to 60 degrees today. Do you and then remember it's... what that used to feel like? Yeah, you know it's going to be degrees? snowing on Thursday. Yeah. So it's, it's my birthday this Thursday, by the oh, way. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Yeah. Polly so, yeah, Dangerous. The, the, Happy birthday to Polly the Dangerous. The bad weather starts on my birthday. You're a horrible you're all, person. You're all That's, welcome. You deserve that because you're, you're, you're a Raiders Sox. fan. Yeah, you're a bad person. Go Liverpool. Yeah. You're literally the worst. You're the If there was a meme or a picture of a definition of person people hate the most it's you you hipster douche <laughs> i love you i love you Polly. don't ever sing epl things over here paul <laughs> where can people find you dude thanks for having me yeah uh baseball <laughs> you're an idiot uh baseball weekend journal at uh, uh look for baseballwj.wordpress.com at baseballwj at paul shivari p-a-u-l-c-h-i-v-a-r-i uh, baseball Weekend Journal. Just Google it. You'll find it. Great stuff. He's been on the network. Actually, we have a few episodes on our YouTube. Check that out. Paul, you are great on not just the uh, the White Sox beat, but on the uh, the baseball front, having your finger on the pulse. Uh, I know it's really hard. Everybody, Paul is the father of three step growing sons, yeah. stepsons. Teenage stepsons, yeah. He works full time. Beautiful wife. Beautiful yeah. wife. And still Playing finds some music on the side. And still, find, hockey, yeah. and still finds a way. All that. Hey, hockey play-by-play, husband, father, radio personality, full-time job, and still finds a way as I'm looking at this nerds of baseball encyclopedias and stuff for 2018, not just all-time, but just for this season alone. Um, Paul is one of the best on there, so really, guys, it, truly, I, I truly mean this. Visit Paul's work. It, it, you're not going to hear anything, anybody with more passion for the sport 
And in today's day and age, where we eat, where we digest our media in so many ways, it's a good thing. He makes you feel like you're sitting in here with him. You're a friend with him. So, Paul, thank you so much for joining us on Saturday Sports Stuff, man. Uh, I'm really excited for another you know, baseball season. I'm really excited to see what you guys have on the network and everything you guys are working on. And as always, dude, you know you have a, a home here. So uh, I'm excited. Even though you're a Sox fan and a Raiders fan and you like soccer and you bring that garbage to my studio, I still love you. Thank you for joining us, man. Thanks for having me. Man. Of course, man. You can follow us everywhere in the universe. We're on Facebook. Like us at Mercado Airwaves. Follow me on Twitter at mmercado233. We're on SoundCloud, soundcloud.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Like, rate, review, and share us on iTunes, itunes.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Every single one of our shows, our interviews, everything that we're doing right here on Mercado Airwaves are brought to you by our amazing producers at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. If you have a brand out there that you want to bring out to a huge, diverse audience, visit us. That is patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Thank you, guys. We really appreciate you. It's, it was a long, fun episode. It's baseball season. That means summer's around the corner. That means the boys of summer are back. It's going to be a fun season. I don't care what anybody says. When baseball is good, America is good. How do you like that? Should I be a politician, Paul? I, you should. That sucked. Thank you guys for joining us. This is a horrible show. We're, we're horrible people. Thank you for joining us. Let's do this again for three hours in the middle of the summer. Three hours? You think people want to listen to us for three <laughs> hours? You think I want to hear myself for three hours? Do you think we'll have a problem filling three hours? Hell no. Thank you guys. for. I think we could fill four hours if we wanted to. Yeah, man. Paul, thank you. This was awesome. Awesome. It was fun. Time. It was fun. Cool. Let's do it again. Awesome. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next time here on Saturday Sports Stuff here on Mercado Airwaves. Mercado Airwaves is brought to you by supporters at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. If you would like to support Mercado Airwaves, visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Find us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. Keep up to date with the show on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. Follow Mike on Twitter at mmercado2333 and on Instagram, mikemercado2333.